You're okay with the government, you're okay with the Biden display of the pride flag at the White House, right? Yes. How would you feel about Trump doing a MAGA flag? I, I wouldn't be okay with that. Why? Stop. That's I, a, it's oh, a, it's a position. Hold on, you f***ing retard. It can't just be <laughs> Republicans <laughs> broke it once, and now we're going to break everything and watch the country fall apart. Breaking news right now out of Hamtramck after hours of debate and hearing from residents, city council makes a decision on displaying pride flags on city property. In fact, Ham, Hamtramck? What a name for a Muslim town. <laughs> Sounds like Ham Planet. Just within the last 10 minutes, city council amended a resolution that would ban the pride flag from being flown on city-owned properties. Good to have you with us here at 11. I'm Devin Skillian. And I'm Christy McDonald. And for Kimberly Gill tonight, Jacqueline Francis. Hot take, hot take, hot take incoming, hot take incoming. I don't think there should be any pride shit flown on any government property. Why? It's just, there's no reason for it. Um, fly the American flag, fly your state and city flags if you want. Why the f are we flying um, social activists? It's getting hot in these walls, on, Stephen. Um, to let the see. <laughs> I'm dying here. Love you, babe. On um, on on government property, it's just dumb. There's just there's literally no reason for it. Same thing with displaying the Ten Commandments or any shit like that. It's just stupid. What about POW flags? Yeah, veterans flags are fine. The stuff related to the military is probably fine. This is their live with just how we got to this point, Jacqueline. Yeah, that meeting is still going on right inside that door. And that vote came down just minutes ago, as you said, the council voting unanimously to approve the resolution. Take a look at the vote. Councilman Five. Yes. Councilman Mahmoud. Yes. Mr. Mayor, resolution 23. Why is the military a valid identity to fly a flag, but not for other ones? Because the military is part of the governmental structure. It's like part of our system it's part it's like part of the country it's the military like it literally extends from the executive branch Wait, like why would you why would you fly the military the government-owned entity that provides defense for the country on government-owned property but not the pride like what do you mean so is lgbtq plus is not part of the what do you mean what And that vote coming after hours. The city is banning all religious, ethnic, racial, political, or sexual orientation group flags. Yeah, I think that's fine. On government property? Yeah, there probably shouldn't be. The government is supposed to represent, and stuff on government property is supposed to represent all of the citizens. I don't know why you would fly flags, like, of a particular, like, ideology that's not directly related to, like, government property or government entities. It doesn't make any sense to me. ...of contentious debate. But we will have the world in two straight miles. So it's a little bit. So then blue lives matter flags too? No, what? you shouldn't fly blue lives matter flags. If you want to, if there was like a copper fire department flag, I guess you could, but no, blue lives matter. No, again, like activist shit shouldn't be part of like flown on governmental property, like no MAGA stuff, no, the no. The difference with showing the 10 commandments on government property is the division of church and state though. The White House put up pride colors after the Supreme Court approved same sex marriage. Like what the issue is. Uh, I just said what I think the issue is, but I, I don't think they're, I don't, you shouldn't, it just doesn't make sense to have it. Like, LGBT pride is not part of the U.S. government. I, I don't it's just dumb. Uh, it's covert, so it's not right on the nose. Big displays of public disapproval for the proposed resolution. Oh. Followed by a very public display of affection. I'm all for removing the gay pride flag. Because you know what, let me tell you something. This is America. I have the right to say I'm against the gay pride flag. If anyone has an issue with it, they could go kick rocks. The resolution proposed by Mayor Pro Tem Mohammed Hassan states the city will not allow any religious, ethnic, racial, political, or sexual orientation group flags to be flown on the city's public property. The only flags allowed would be the American state and city flags. Oh my God! Did they take my take from the future? Holy sh! How do they do it? True. That's what I said. American flag, state flag, municipality, city flag, whatever is fine. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> With other nation flags and the prisoner of war flag. <laughs> and I'm oh my God, they got them all. Good job. From California to Hamtramck. That's really far away. And I did it because I- <laughs> Wait, what? Other nation flags and the prisoner of war flag. 
I relocated from California to- Oh, relocated. I thought she just was like coming in from out of town to go to the city council meeting. To Hamtramck, that's really far away. And I did it because I thought it was a diverse community. You don't see my family sitting there putting the flag and say, You're I'm gonna put the Lebanese flag down your throat. You keep your flag, you wanna put it at your house, put it at your house. Do not put it on city property and do not put it in our schools. Yes, sir. Nice and simple. Wouldn't your argument just lead to progressive states or cities changing their flag to be the pride flag? It feels like it's not an argument at all, other than valid just because. I, I mean, I already gave an argument, you just don't like it. Uh, if you wanna change your state or city flag to be a pride flag, I guess you could. I mean, if you vote on it and go through the process, then f it. that's the city, that would be the city or state flag. But I doubt that would get passed. But I mean, if you want to, go for it. Before voting to approve the resolution, the council members and the mayor made comments of their own, saying that this is not about targeting one specific group, adding that if you let one flag in, you'd have to let all the flags in. True. Reporting live from Hamtramck, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. All right, Jacqueline, thank you. The POW is literally a social activism flag. You are wrong. Okay. What about when people fly St. Patty's Day flags? I'm in public spaces. We're talking about, hold on. When we say public here, we mean public city property, public property, not just like an open public, not like a public space, but public is in like owned by the city or state. That's what we're talking about here. <clears throat> hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, man. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's up? Nothing much. You chilling? Big chilling. So you have a take about flags? Yeah. Before we get to that take, though, let me start off on a mm -hmm. on a one and zero. Oh. I bet you don't know what kind of suit you're supposed <laughs> to wear to a courthouse. Oh, what do you mean? Do you know what kind of suits lawyers are supposed to wear when they go to court? Is this like a setup, like for these nuts? No. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You're supposed to wear a lawsuit. <laughs> okay, go. What's up? Hey, uh, no, I just, I the end have an initial flag on my city property, Coward's Gun C. Pride flags being displayed on government property. And so I guess I wanted to understand the scope of your opinion and then maybe offer a. a yeah, sure. Idea. I think probably on public property, it should probably be restricted to like symbols or displays of like government related things, I would imagine. So, like, and the policy flag. rationale is. Um, because public property is supported by everybody in the United States. So it, we should probably find like the most watered down, like shared belief that we can put on like public property. So for instance, mm -hmm. if I live in a city or state, my tax money is going towards supporting that particular thing. Whether I like it or not, I have to support the city, the state, the country I live in. I do that with my taxes, property taxes, state taxes, city, whatever. Um, that, so that's a non-negotiating position. You can't say, I'm not gonna pay my taxes, right? So at that foundational level, you can support the flags, you can display whatever, but I might hate LGBT stuff. I might not like a, might not like a certain religion, whatever like that. The city, mm -hmm. state, that property should represent everybody in the country. And putting that type of stuff on there that's like hotly debated, um, not agreed on by everybody, I think is a, is a breach of what ought to be on public property. Mm -hmm. And to be clear to understand the scope of your opinion, it's not a commentary on what is legal and what is not legal. It's a question about what you think should be the case, right? It's not a first well, amendment. Yeah, what is legal or not thing. legal? No, I don't think that would, I don't know if that would have any bearing on it. Like it's legal it would, to execute people. Yeah. Should we have like flags of the yeah, electric I just chair? Yeah, sure it's, it's not illegal. It's not like a legal um, sort of First Amendment thing. It's it's a, a policy question. Yeah, I, I don't think it necessarily plays into that. Okay. Well, I think that that position, um, is it unique to displays or flags, or does it extend to things like holidays and any other kind of government speech that you can imagine? Um, government holidays are probably fine. What are the, what are the distinguishing characteristics that that make one you know a, a speech or a resolution by the the Congress in support of some political message? Well, it's one is literally like a if we've decided federally to recognize like a federal holiday. Okay, then... so say suppose that Congress says we're we're passing a resolution, and for the period of whatever. Um, this following sets of months, we're going to display the Ukrainian flag um, right next to the American flag on some um, 
in some house, in some audience. Um, hold on, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have started this boss fight. One second. You're good. Give me, give me, give me a, a second, I'm gonna mute. Yeah, 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 you do that, you do that. Okay, sorry, go for it. Okay. Oh yeah, you're good. I guess, um, I think that, I guess I'll, I usually do this kind of questioning thing mm -hmm. to get to the, because I think it's a, yeah. it's a good way to get to the bottom of stuff. Oh yeah, we were but saying that like, I'll, if there was like a, if there's like a federal holiday, obviously, it's it's a federal holiday, so it's like Martin Luther King Day and Easter, I think, and Christmas yeah. and shit, sure. Yeah. I want to stop doing this, because I, I feel like I do it too much and it annoys people when I, when I do Who the cares? questioning thing. I'm just going to, I know, I know, but I just want to, for this time, I'm just going to try to, to be more affirmative, and, oh, and so okay. this is where I'm, what I'm seeing the disagreement. Okay. Um, so... I think that in your mind, there's something distinguishing artistic displays or fixed displays that are visible for people. And there's something different about flags that you wouldn't extend to the category of thing, call it joint resolutions, declarations, holidays, um, other kinds of displays. And so I wanna know from you, what is different about flags, if there is anything different. And then I wanna know like, um, even if, if there is no difference in terms of the, the kind of display, there is um why would we be okay with something like a ukrainian flag display or would we not be okay with that and then how would we distinguish that i think that when it comes to international issues i think it's a bit different i think that even if we're divided on international issues you can make an argument for foreign flags um, like the ukrainian flag because you would argue that the united states as a nation is standing in favor even if we are divided internally we're standing um, united on an external front for those things i could see there being arguments against it though like that'd be a more um ten, that'd be a more difficult position to defend but um but there's I, a lot of discussion and debate about our yeah. presence in Ukraine. Yeah, I just said that. I agree. Ukraine. I agree yeah. with you. I just said that. But regardless of our internal debate, when we send stuff to other countries, we're not. There's no debate once the weapons are there, right? That's like the United States as a whole, however divided we might be internally, externally, is providing one source of of, of united help, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to like like a like a say like a pride flag or some social issue flag, um, that's it's a domestic internal issue. It's not codified in law, and it's something that we are hotly contesting among ourselves right now. So I feel like that would be an inappropriate thing to, to place on a mm -hmm. city council or on a state assembly or federal courthouse, or, they just, or even on the White House. I think it's inappropriate because these are supposed to be symbols that uniformly represent all Americans. And why would you put a hotly contested social issue um, up and take a side on it when, when that's not, yeah. yeah that, that'd if be I'm major. understanding you correctly, it sounds like there's a division you'd like to propose between foreign issues and domestic issues uh, or issues that are codified. I don't know if those are a combined thing or if they're the same thing. Like the fact that something is codified into a law, if it were a domestic or social issue, um, say for instance, civil rights, would that change how you feel about some kind of civil rights? You can put in the hypothetical yourself. I don't need to go into it. Um, is it the codification itself? The fact that it's an act of government policy separate from the display or the 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 speech itself. Wait, what are you asking? What would the display be? Okay, so I, I, I see a division in how you're treating certain issues versus others, even though they're hotly contested, right? Mm -hmm. Ukraine, hotly contested. Um, issues related to aspects of LGBTQ representation, hotly debated, so no, no difference there. Um, but one way that you could have a difference between how you would feel about Ukrainian display and an LGBT display is by saying, one, either that the Ukrainian policy, even though it's hotly debated, it represents some kind of. Oh wait, hold on, wait. What is? A, I'm trying to figure out what is a display you're talking about. Like, what what would you be displaying that you're asking? A hypothetical me? Ukrainian flag display. Oh, you know. Okay. That that the government would have in some public space. It seemed like you would be okay with that. Um. Yeah, I think so. Like, but again, that yeah. position would be more tenuous than being in favor of like an American flag, or a state flag, or a city flag. But it's dispositive in the sense that if someone asks you, are you okay with that? You'd be like, mm, I'm balanced, yeah. Not as much as I am okay with the sure, American Sure, yes, flag, I would be but, okay with it, yeah. Yeah, but whereas the in the gay case, you'd be like, on balance, no. Um, and so the, it changes the, the answer. And so I would say that there is a distinction there in your mind between it. And yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get to what that is. Is it the fact that one shows support for Ukraine because it's part of the American policy as enacted yeah. Through the yes. political process? Yes. Or is it because it's a foreign issue? Which which one that, of those? That, that one, because of the American policy thing or whatever, yeah. Yeah, I just... <laughs> like, 
And the, the policy surely has to be separate from the display itself. The solidarity itself is done in furtherance or to, to coincide with some kind of other agenda or, or policy done, presumably, right? Because, you know, Congress could pass a law that says we shall have the gay flag, uh, LGBT uh, pride flag on display, and that would be an enactment by Congress, right? Let's say the then, president. I mean, if they pass a law be... for it, I mean, then yeah, sure. I, although I'm not sure if I'd be in favor of the law, but I mean, if they pass that law, that would give them yeah, sure. Would you be okay? Well, then that just <laughs> that just says that you have a problem with the process. The process is like you're not okay with some city or state government unilaterally I, I, on doing the it, most if... in the most general sense. My position is, uh, or, or, or the rationale behind the position is that um, publicly funded property ought to be a representation of as many American people as possible. That ought to be the case. Now, in general, the process that ensures that is stuff like legislation, right? Now, if you're saying, well, hypothetically, what if we legislated that every flag in the United States had a giant thorny black dragon dildo? And I'm like, well, that doesn't sound like a good law. That's not disproving my argument because you're picking an issue that legislation typically would prohibit from happening because most Americans wouldn't be, like legislation tends to map onto mm -hmm. desires of most Americans. So if you're gonna propose to me legislation that clearly doesn't map onto the desires of most Americans, I mean, I'll say that I, I kind of agree, kind of disagree, but your intuition pumping mm -hmm. something there that like is obviously breaking the hypothetical. But yeah. Here's where I think know. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm trying to get to. I'm Go. trying to get to, I think that it has nothing to do, or I shouldn't say it has nothing to do. It obviously has something to do with the process and the procedure. And so you might feel differently about how something comes about. But I think that there is something about the substance that is driving what's going on. I think that if you were, say, suppose that the same amount of people um, were in support of, I don't know, racial inequality in the United States mm -hmm. as our supporting of the Ukraine war. And there was some kind of <laughs> foreign facing foreign facing agenda that coincided with uh, inequality we were, we were pushing for inequality in our sisters you know something like that or you know reverse us back to the time of the uh, of the civil rights era i think notwithstanding the fact that there could be widespread support for public displays affirming inequality say a confederate flag or something like that the widespread or u ubiquity or relative ubiquity of, of that thought you'd still be against that flag right the just confederate you, flag uh, of that being displayed, wouldn't you? You'd be, you'd be against that, the Confederate flag being sort of present, notwithstanding the fact that there's on, on a great deal of support. Pu on it, public right? property? Yeah. Right, yeah. 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 So, so I think that there's something substantive about what's going on th that... <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't, I don't, I'm not sure what we've hit on that's different, right? I would I disagree with the Confederate flag because... Um, you disagree with the merits of the Confederate flag? Um, well, yeah, because it's like, obviously that would be like a highly contentious, yeah. it's like a social uh, issue, like activist issue that... But if you could, if you could, oh, well, I, I don't know, is racial equality an activist issue? It was for a long time. It and, could be. Things be can a... change. Things can be activist yeah, issues. Yeah. Like, for instance, I wouldn't say that, like, women voting right now is an activist issue. That's, like, pretty settled. Right, but right, it was at yeah. one point in time, it was, in, it was a very contentious issue, right? Sure, so things can change over time. Like, yeah. I would have, like, if you would have asked me, like, five years ago... Um, like, I, I probably would have said that the pride flag is less contentious. I think even most people would agree that it's less contentious than it is now. Um, it just it depends on, like, the social factors, I guess, or the yeah, social so I, I, I would, I think that what we have going on here is that there's a, a group of people in this country who want to have a heckler's veto, which in my, to describe what that is, it would be like, um, suppose that every time you wanted to have a pride parade in, in public sp spaces where that's allowed, uh, someone started a riot to, to prevent that from happening. And so it, it came to be that displays of pride in the country would be coincided with public disorder and disruption because it would necessarily attend to counter protests who would cause violence. That to me sounds like a heckler's veto where someone can stop otherwise legitimate and laudable speech from being heard. I don't and, like, and yeah, said, I don't like the comparison though because like, w w w we have the right to because there's more controversy now no 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 if you wanted to talk about like doing a protest like on like an like in a in a state courthouse sponsored by the state courthouse we could talk about it but you're talking about like i'm not sorry sorry i wasn't using that to compare the private actions taken by people in public spaces to public action taken okay that's what i'm using that to um elaborate on what the notion of a heckler's veto is that somehow the amount of um resistance that in, in terms of punctuated resistance, where there's 
a, a reliable chorus from, I would say, a minority that is particularly virulent or particularly violent, let's say, that that should not be allowed to stop otherwise, you know, speech that we would think is, is fine for the government to engage in. You just said five years ago, you think that the pride flag would be less controversial than it is today. I mean, if there was you, ever, that, do you think there's ever a fair time for like a heckler's veto or no? Because I feel like if there ever was, it would be displays on state property. Like, for I, instance, like what percentage of this country? Well, here, I'm curious. Yeah. How do you feel about when people fought about like having Ten Commandments? Um, yeah, yeah. So for Because like certain, the majority of the country is yeah. like Christian, right? When that was happening, the, the um, majority of the country might still be Christian. For, for certain kinds of places and in certain kinds of proceedings, I think that what you're talking about makes a lot of sense. Um, so, for instance, I think that it would make uh, it would be bad for the courthouse to have a flag of Republicans or a "Don't Tread on Me" flag, because part of the expectation of a court is that you're going there to have a neutral adjudication of some kind, and that there there is equality in, mm -hmm. in terms of political views and that stuff within a courthouse. And then there's the extra issue related to um, separation of church and state and the Establishment Clause that would animate my concerns with the Ten Commandments. Obviously, the Supreme Court has emphatically and consistently ruled against my position on that. Um, and so there's no chance of me being um, sort of overruled on that. I, I don't agree with the display on the merits because I don't agree with it. Um, and I also think that there's a potential Establishment Clause violation. And I think that there's a, a problem related to it, the fact that it being in a courthouse might implicate some due process concerns. But, but all that being said, I think that it's wholly different in the political spaces, in a state, uh, you know, a, let's say city hall, something like that. Those are the houses of the political branches. And I expect my politicians and people who are part of the political branches to be political. You know, I expect Trump to, to be MAGA. And I'm sure that I would disagree with well, him putting a MAGA flag. Well, well, when you uh, say on. you expect them to be political, I, I think you have to separate a little bit like ideology from process. Like I, I, I expect them to be politically, like political when it comes to process, but I don't think I would expect them to be political when it comes to ideology or partisanship. Mm -hmm. So like if a new state governor came in and they started replacing mm -hmm. like, let's say there was like a courthouse with a bunch of paintings of like the president, if yeah. they took down all the Democrat ones and just kept up the Republican ones, or if they started putting up, you know, like hell is for Democrat signs on a state house, and we're like, well, I mean, it's a Republican, I expect them to be political. I would expect them to be political well, and that they run the political I, process, but not partisan. Yeah. Ship, yeah. I just want to say, and I understand that it's different because the city hall, there's an expectation that people can come and go, and it's different than the White House, but it's, it's a fun example for you to bring up because literally presidents will change and arrange what is being displayed in any given uh, point during their administration in the White House. And I agree as a matter of norm that there should be a spirit, at, you know, it's a policy matter of bipartisanship and congeniality and not doing overt acts of political animus. And I think that that's that's all fine, and, and I think that th there is an interest and in the democratic process will resolve or attempt to resolve issues related to pure political animus, or you'd hope that they would resolve them. Mm -hmm. um, but any kind of line that we're gonna draw that says categorically, I do not want any displays uh, or only displays based on things that are not controversial, that to me seems to be, uh, you know, too far or, or, or too much of a standard. And that seems super fair to me. It's it's supposed to represent all of us. How would you feel if you were like a Christian or Muslim, like very much adhering to your faith, and mm -hmm. then you go to your state house or your city house, um, public it property? All the time. Wait, it, it, those things that happens all the time. There's there's displays to. Um, it, it, now there's specific things with respect to. Well, what do you mean when you say um, it happens all the time? What does that mean? Certain government property is not allowed because of the establishment clause. You're not allowed to have that connection with with religion in the same way. But in terms of having that kind of feeling there, right? In God we trust, written above, uh, in courthouses in New York, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think that's cringe. I would I would be more arguing against that before I would be allowing the pride flag, uh, the in God we trust shit. I think it was an editor of Money in Fifty Two. That shit is cringe as fuck. But I, I would be more in favor of getting rid of that before allowing everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but you're okay with the so so the, I guess I'm not satisfied with the, with the line on the Ukrainian, which is like there's a official policy in Ukraine that America is just 
supporting by by putting that flag. There could be an you know uh, the Congress now in a bipartisan fashion has passed the uh, a, a protection of gay marriage in the United States. Mm -hmm. That's an official policy in the United States. That happened in the in the in the wake of um, sure, but of the gay Dobbs marriage decision. is not the pride flag. I, if you really I, wanted, I to, if you wanted to be <laughs> cheeky about it, and you wanted to make a display on public property of like posting some part of like the U.S. code or some amendment passed or whatever, then I guess you could do that. that. At the very least, you're at least like that's like federal law or something. If you want to do that, but that's not the pride flag. What what kind of policy could America enact that you would be okay with a? When would you be okay with America? American displays on public property of the pride flag. I mean, I, I guess like if there was a process by which a city could vote on it and people did vote and do it, then I, I mean, I guess at that point I'm probably okay. Because then you can make my argument that like, well, this is the official city process. You're bought into the process, and that's you know what the process says. So I, I, I mean, I guess if there was like a public vote on it, then or 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 a, or a vote by your representatives, however they do that type of policy, I guess I'd be okay with yeah, it. Yeah, you vote for your mayor, you vote for your governor, you vote for. <laughs> uh, now, obviously, we would have problems. If someone tried to put up a Confederate flag over State Hall or whatever, but I think that those would be merits. Problems, or I mean, I, if right? they, those, I mean, if they vote for it, I guess fuck it. But I think you would have a merits problem with that. You would say, I don't agree with what that flag represents. I think it's stupid to put. I don't. I don't think that you would say something like. But people might say well, the same thing about the Pride flag, right? But then you vote on it. Yeah. Huh? Well, well, but but that's what I'm saying. Like they did when they voted for their governor, their mayor, whatever, or Biden or Trump, by the way, who who hugged the Pride flag, if you if you recall. Although I don't understand it's different. It's not. A public display it's not what we're talking about but i'm just saying that it's not the case that there is no republican support for for the pride flag if that's sort of the 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 standard though i don't think that that's what you're saying um but but yeah like here we have legitimate political processes people who are authorized to put flags and and if people disagree they can vote them out and i don't understand um why we should have this line of like no controversy allowed for public displays or public speech do you, okay, can you engage with my Because you keep saying I don't see yeah. why, but you have never addressed my argument. My argument is that city council, city public property should represent as many Americans as possible, which is going to require some watered down, like baseline version of like these are the very basic proper things that we believe in. I, okay, I think at some at some level, yeah. I agree with some version okay. of that, especially okay. in places where neutral adjudication or neutral processes. Sure, I'm not even talking expected. adjudication or necessarily processes. I'm just talking about public Things funding and you, represent right? it, yeah, representation, it, it, yes. So what I'm telling you is that for me, it's not all equal in terms of public property. Some public public property, I'm gonna be very against any kind of display um, re relating to a political or social issue. And I'm just telling you that there's, there's a disparity in, in what kind of public property and what kind of displays and that will shift according to where it is and what the display is and I think that that's true for you too unless you disagree with that and you think it's all equal all the time I feel like I would tr I'm sure there's probably going to be some exception like in a courthouse there might be like a chapel or something in which case it'd be okay to have like Christian but, but for the and... most part you, you would say right like for the most part I would what, say what, I would hold consistent this ruling or my opinion here on all across all public property yeah equally yes Unless so there's like, like a like a like a public chapel or something, right? Like a, there might be some exception like that, but in general, yeah. Okay. Um, so to engage with you, I think that there is there's some room for on official state government business a, a need to refrain or a policy reason that you should refrain from outward, um, outwardly super contentious issues to the scale of uh, where it's disrupting the processes of government or but, but the thing is I say that out loud but I think there's room for government to be responsive to public pressure the other way you know the the, the normative desire to try to push equality do I want to take that away categorically from all public displays and why wouldn't that be the same rationale for getting rid of Martin Luther King Day back you know whenever that was I actually don't remember when my God, I could be holiday. wrong, but like for federal holidays, is that that must be congressionally done, right? Yeah, I, the president um, Biden just made Juneteenth uh, a federal holiday, so I don't know what the is it, process is for that. Well, yeah, well, the but, process part is probably important because I would change because like things that get, I'm going to give a lot of leeway to things that are passed by Congress, right? Because I'm a big procedural cuck. <laughs> but what about things passed by say legislature? Yeah, I would. I would say the same. I would, yeah. 
That's why I said so that, like, if you wanted to argue for the pride flag, like, if you're gonna, if, if there's some process by which the city council or whatever, or state legislature can pass it, I'd probably be a little bit more warm to that, because part of your buy into a particular state or city is that you have to go by pass legislation. Similar to taxes, okay. I guess. So you would be okay with the, with the pride flag on a government property as long as the legislature passed a law? Or um, yeah, I guess if a law was passed, because that's how we do things in this country, yeah, is through past legislation. So what happens to your argument about what it should and the fact that the state should be neutral on public property? Why would you, why won't you just be like, no, no, you shouldn't even pass any laws about this stuff. I, I would disagree with those laws. What, to make it like a civil, or make it like a constitutional thing that the government ought to display oh, absolutely no, no. no... Wouldn't you be against any law that said a pride flag will be you know, flown on Pride Month. Wouldn't you be against any law that said that? Um, what would I be against? I, hmm. I think right now I probably would be, but you're asking me whether I would be against something is different than, like, I'm also against the high taxes in California, but I pay them when I was there. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I'm so wait, saying, are, you, like, are you asking me, like, would I personally be in someone, favor of it or would I follow okay, you're it? A or, senator. Yeah. You're a senator in U.S. Congress, and okay. there's a... Uh, the I don't know some senator has proposed and it, for the Congress to consider mm -hmm. a law that would make it um, required for the Pride flag to be flown um, near Congress on Pride Month. Are you voting in favor of that law or against that law? Um, I might vote in favor of it. Bro, you're in favor of Pride flags. I don't know what to tell you. I, I mean, you're asking me different questions. Do you understand? No, but come on, if you're saying that you would vote for having a pride flag over it, you're just saying it's a process issue. And yeah, but, I'm actually but, it in hasn't, of it. But, but if it hasn't been voted on, then I probably wouldn't be in favor of it. Right? Okay. You, you understand? Okay. You're asking me like a different... Yeah, you're but you're saying me, that... You're, like, you're, you're asking you me like, would you, would you personally vote for a particular thing? And I say, yeah, oh, well then you must be in favor of that thing being done right now. Well, no, it hasn't been voted on yet. Right? But you would be in favor of, if, if that vote were to occur, and if someone were to ask you your political policy... Uh, position it would be I would vote for a law that would do it. I just don't agree with the process in which it's been put up. I think that that's been sure. But I mean, like when we executives. talk about like governmental like things, the process is really important. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. It's really important. So if there was a if a city or a state had done a vote on these are the flags that we're going to fly in this particular thing, right? If that's a process that exists, part of your social contract in living in a particular city, state, or country is that you must abide by the legislation that's there. That's part of your buy-in for the thing or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, if they pass a law saying that there's a particular thing you have to do, like, then I mean, but, you have but to hang do on a second. Yeah. Now I'm gonna, if there were uh, the same policy or law being considered, but instead of the pride flag, it's a Confederate flag, would you vote in favor or against it? Well, I vote against that because I don't believe in the yeah, Confederate exactly. shit, right? So, it's, so the, it's all, for me, it's all a process argument. Um, yeah, of and, course, yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, then I think we... I don't think I ever had a- I don't think I ever had a different position, though. I think you were against it because you thought it was cringe. No. I don't- okay. well, the new pride flag is cringe, <laughs> but the rainbow one is fine. But, like, no, I'm against it because, like, because of- I didn't even say it was against it because you were cringe. The original argument I gave you, I'll repeat it now for the second or third time, the original gar um, argument I gave you was that city or state houses should represent the public in probably the most base way possible. Ba like, mm -hmm. fundamental way possible. That should probably be Not what they're limited to. Not based, but like like sure. base fundamental way. That all, probably yeah. should be what they have. Um, if they want to change the types of things that they represent, if you, if you want to make a change the types of flags you have, I guess you can do that, but as long as it's done via like legislation, like some process by which the city, state, or federal government agree is like this is how we decide like which flags to hang or which things to do or whatever okay i think that's uh that's an oh that's a, a position that i respect if, if you're saying like i just don't agree with governors doing it or the presidents doing it unilaterally or sure like, like how would you feel it? about like like so for instance you're okay with the government you're okay with the biden display of the pride flag at the white house right yes how would you feel about trump doing a maga flag i i wouldn't be okay with that why I think that I you have. I think MAGA. you have more justification for the MAGA flag than the Pride flag, because Trump yeah. literally won the election, no, which is arguably uh, right, MAGA. Yeah. But the gay Pride didn't win any elections, so I think you have a stronger yeah. argument for the MAGA flag being flown to the White House than the Pride flag. So how do you? For get? me, it's at that point, it's it's um, it's a merits argument. I disagree with MAGA, and I'm in favor of Pride. Oh, so you don't care about why, the process right? at all. You no, literally just on, it's no, the no, thing you no, like. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Oh, okay. I think that it's legitimate for. I, I just agree that the executives that you elect, right, 
the governor, the mayor, that these people are also legitimate uh, individuals and uh, offices by which the electorate can make their political, uh, you know, views Sure, known. but everything and you so just said, I would, hardcore supports I would my argument, that. because there's a bigger, like, support for, quote-unquote, MAGA flags, because they voted literally for MAGA Trump, sure. than there are for gay pride flags, yeah, which no. is not necessarily what you voted for Biden. But, but let me be clear. Okay. I support the fact that elected officials take um, their own views on political issues and make displays corresponding to their their views and what they think is right. Um, I'm still waiting for how this in, gets in, away in a, from the in a powers fight. question. In a powers question, right? In a terms of who has the legitimacy to do this, right? I'm not in support, and I think you would not be in support either of some random guy going up and putting the flag. Correct. So we're and before you seem to have a problem with the president just putting the pride flag up. Agreed. You wanted that to be a congressional. Yeah, but act. I'm holding the same I'm, answer for the pride flag and the mega flag. But you seem like you you said you were okay with the pride flag. But I'm, I'm hanging. I'm hanging. I'm, I'm going. I'm okay. going. So I disagree with that fundamental point because I think the president is also answerable to the people through his election, and so I'm okay with just the president putting up the pride flag as a powers question. Now, if just the, but that's not enough to solve the question about whether I'm going to support it, right? The fact that he has the power to do it. Well, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not asking if you support I'm the flag. I'm getting there. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> just because I'm, uh, I agree with a particular office's authority to hoist political symbols doesn't mean that I agree with how that power is used in every case. And so in the case of Biden putting up the flag, I both agree that his office has the authority and legitimacy to put up that display and where it's being displayed. And I agree with the flag he's putting up. Both are required for me to think that it's a legitimate uh, display. And so in the Trump case, yeah, I agree. He's a duly elected president and he has every entitlement and right to to make his views known in, this, in the sense of legitimacy as a powers question. But I disagree with the display. And so that's where I would distinguish. So then ultimately cases. the process by which you decide if a flag can go up or not is if you agree with it? I think that for, in terms of political... Because I'm understanding the legal you're, giving me two, you're giving me two two requirements. One is that they follow the process to do it, and you think they automatically have that ability to do it just by virtue of being the executive. And then the second the, is if you the, agree with the flag. It's not like those are the two conditions you gave. How I'm going to agree with a particular political display, I guess I'll add a third criteria there, but the, the okay. first one is, do you have the authority to do it? That would be, you know, you know, the president or Congress, I think both in different spheres and in different moments have uh, authorities and in the state equivalents and state analogs have, have their equivalents. And then the third thing would be, does it violate some, some um, strong constitutional norm, either with respect to the due process and administration of law in a courthouse, something similar, or uh, you know, the separation of church and state, those kinds of principles versus does, um, do uh, you know? Is it not implicating those concerns? So those are the kind of the three big criteria. And to just give you an example, right? If Donald Trump and George Bush wanted to pursue an agenda of abstinence-only sex education, that's their prerogative, right? They were elected; they can go across the country and start you know, making that their agenda. If they want to talk about how important Christian values are. And yeah, we're not. We're way, way, way off now. I don't. I don't think we're talking about what they can go around the country and talk about. That's fine. They can do whatever they want. But I'm asking yeah. for hanging flags on the White House. What would be the yeah. thing that would make it not okay for you? We are saying that like he. Sh are you saying Trump should be allowed to hang the MAGA flag, but you disagree with it? Or are you saying he shouldn't even be allowed to? I think Trump should be allowed to display the MAGA flag. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. You just don't but want I, to. But I disagree with it. it. Well, I wouldn't allow him to put it in the Supreme Court, right? There would be. But some you would allow there. him to put it on the White House. Probably, yeah. Okay. I would be disagree with that. I'd say it's it's horrible. It's it's um it's gaudy. I disagree with that. I think it's yeah. A that's fine. But I'm saying, okay. Yeah. But, well, but how do you disagree? Well, because I wouldn't want. I I don't think that there is like a political flag like that. I don't think belong unless there's like a piece pa we pass Hang legislation to do it. Yeah, go. <laughs> but but if, if there was a there was con uh, Republican Congress and if they passed a law that said, it shall be the policy of the United States so long as the president approves to display the MAGA flag during whatever time, um, in the White House, and they pass a law, president signs it. Mm -hmm. You're still against the president doing that. No, if they pass, I mean, like I wouldn't like it, but I would be. Yeah, you're against it. Hold you on, you're using, wait, wait, you're using this word in such a weird way. You're against it. Like, I'm against the death penalty, but I'm for the state enacting powers that are, like, legislated to it to execute people. You don't people. think they should have done that thing. 
you don't agree with them having passed that law. You are against them having yeah, passed not, that I'm not, law. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I, I guess I'm just. I'm asking if you think that they ought to have the power to do so. Not I, like I, if you I've, personally I've agree with it. Ha- I've said that I think that, they, and you agreed at least with respect to Congress that they should have the power to do it. Because you said I would agree with them if they passed the yeah, law. Yeah, but I'm saying allowed- absent any law, Biden seems to be able to <laughs> place the pride flag. Do you think absent any new laws, Trump should have been able to? Not do you agree with it? Not do you worship MAGA? I, I I'm do saying think do you think should okay? You with, do with think the, with okay. the limit with the constitutional limits that I have been, uh, I've talking uh, spoken about with which are high thresholds. I agree, they're high mm-hmm. thresholds. I would I would say that that's a matter of deference for the political branches to decide and that I can disagree with any particular display because I disagree with the merits of it. But there's no big way to distinguish the pride flag uh, versus the MAGA flag in that respect, except by substance. And I think that it would be silly to separate Congress's role from the, the chief executive's role since they're both answerable to the people ultimately. And really, we think of this. I would think of this more as, as the executive's role in terms of like what flags, what pictures, what art to display. I think that that's, you know, historically executives both in the state and, and federal level have done that. Okay. All right. Anything else? It's a good combo, bro. No, no. That's, Wait, Pisco, don't happen. run. Yeah. Oh, don't run yet. Uh-oh. I want to continue some of the conversation that oh. you and Destiny were having yesterday. Oh, oh. I know what it's about. Uh-oh. About oh, Durham, what? special counsels, unitary oh. executive theory. There's just no there's a lot Uh-oh. to unpack. Okay. I, I don't know if we disagree on anything, but I do want to pick your brain about some shit. Okay. So first, um, the Trump case, uh, and, and this actually this ties into um, you and I had a conversation with Batman and Destiny a couple of days ago about whether or not Cannon, Aileen Cannon would recuse herself. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you've been following, but apparently she's issued a direct order uh, telling Trump's attorneys that he need they need to contact the Department of Justice and get expedited security clearance, mm-hmm. suggesting that she's yeah, going to continue that. to preside over the case. Yeah, I saw that. Yep. Okay. So I was listening to some commentary and somebody pointed out that like, doesn't the US code, like 28 US code section 455 require Canon to recuse herself because there is a reasonable question of her impartiality. 28 US what, sorry? 28 US code section 455. I'll send you the link. I, I don't have them memorized. I have that one you. memorized and absolutely it does not require her. Yeah, send, send, me a, send me a link on Discord and, and see the other message I sent you by the way. Um, okay. Okay, I saw any you justice sh- shall disqualify him and uh, self himself um, in any proceeding. So she's a woman. So she. I'm just kidding. Um, oh, there we go. Yep. Lo- so ultimate sure. loophole. Shall disqualify himself in any proceeding in which his impartiality uh, might be uh, might reasonably be questioned. Yeah. Uh, so I would say to you, just like a lot of the other codes of ethical codes applied to federal judges and a lot of um, standards of conduct that as important as the words and the standards are, who interprets them is- she, Well, I guess in her important. case, it would be her, right? Because she would have the discretion to recuse or not. Yeah, so that, that would be a determination. That would be like a legal determination that she would, someone would motion for her to recuse herself, right? Right, if she chooses not and to she, do it herself. So she, so if she interprets, which uh, based on what we're seeing now, it seems like she's not interpreting it the way that I'd prefer mm-hmm. her to interpret. She's not gonna recuse herself. Has she, I, I, you're an attorney. Do you agree that, in your opinion, that she should have recused herself? Um, I, I think not knowing the standard, I, I think the standard for recusal for previous decisions is some super high threshold of incorrectness with the proviso that I think that her previous rulings in the special master civil case that Trump started were egregious and mm-hmm. uh, absurd and the, jurisdi- right. the, the claim to jurisdiction there and some of the language there is preposterous. I don't have any special um, knowledge or research on recusal standards and so I'm, I'm scared to, to wade into it, but just as a political matter, I will say I feel a little bit weird about a motion to recuse herself. Um, if anyone says it's because she's a Trump appointed judge, I think that's preposterous. That can't be the standard. That's what Trump was talking about with respect to Obama judges, right? So I, I, it can't just be because she was appointed. Would you by accept Trump. a combination um, that she's a Trump appointed judge and in like no, the context I don't think it of her? Should, you I shouldn't factor think, at all? Uh, unless there's, there's some evidence related to an improper motive um, that's tied with her appointment itself and some kind of specific, I'm gonna require a particularized specific evidence. But doesn't, 
But um, she has a. But, isn't that technically a relationship of some of some sort with the defendant? Like, wouldn't a judge in any other situation, if they had any sort of like professional mm -hmm. relationship or patronage with the defendant in a case, wouldn't they be obligated to recuse They're themselves? No, yeah. No, I don't. I don't think that it's the same kind of. Um, the same kind of thing and it's kind of a legal fiction that we talk about that there's no relationship between them but mm -hmm. it, it would be hard to operate a judiciary um that worked that way you know think about the first the very first cases by the supreme court of the united states they were ruling on like you know marbury versus madison right these were all appointed by the same guys they were all like uh you know some of them wrote the the federalist papers and um, right they're all part of the first congress or you know were the attorney general or the uh you know part of the previous administration so i i, I don't think that um it's it's workable to have a recusal system that uh, considers the political party of the person nominating or even the individual of the person nominating. I think that that's too far. I feel like um, on a broad sense too, it also super undermines the entire legitimacy of our entire legal system if we're to assume that if two people, if somebody appointed somebody, they can't be a fair judge, right? Or if somebody um, is part of a political party with somebody that they can't be a fair judge, right? Yeah, I, I think that like we that have was because right, yeah. Trump tried to give an argument um, that uh, that that what that one remember a long time ago for that Trump school or mm -hmm. whatever there was that one lawyer Trump whose University. parents were mm -hmm. from Mexico and he was like oh well this guy can't rule fairly on my case because I'm making anti Mexican policy right yeah I think that that's right so uh, I, I like would be very I would be very hesitant extremely hesitant and highly prejudicial against any rule that considered either dispositively or as some kind of significant uh, point, the, the the fact of someone's appointment by itself or in combination with other things um, to be relevant into the, into the recusal process. Unless there were some kind of particular and specified evidence that said their appointment itself was there was something corrupt or oh, yeah, highly prejudicial about it. Let's say that like, you know, you gave it there's a letter that says i'm giving you this judgeship because i'm going to rule i want you to rule in my favor all the time and there was a letter back from her saying i will rule in your favor every time right so but then it would be more the letter and and that plus the appointment um so i you know i, I really think Fair. that we should get away from that kind of uh showing i don't know did that make sense no that no that makes sense but okay so then in just in terms of Again, the history with her rulings on the special master yeah. and the fact that they were, you know, overruled it's and really reprimanded bad. by the Eleventh Circuit. Yeah. I guess it's facially, though, would you just reading that particular code? And I understand that you know you mm -hmm. you would probably want to do some more studying into it, but just like just a blind reading of it, and based on what you know of Judge Cannon's previous rulings, are yeah. you at least sympathetic to the idea that she should recuse herself or that Jack Smith should press for her to be recused or to, it, for the case to be reassigned? Uh, there's a lot of questions there. So the one yeah. is like, what does the statute say? If, if I'm reading the statute as someone who's not very familiar with the statute, who had to ask what the statute was, um, do the plain words of it, does she seem to fulfill that criteria just based on her rulings in the special master case? Yes. If I was reading that statute as a lay person and as someone you know who doesn't understand that this law is going to be interpreted by case law in which those standards are going to be further elaborated upon um, in specific cases. And these are the... There are there's specific case law, I believe, even in the 11th Circuit that 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 talks about this. I would say, yeah, I, I question, I reasonably question her impartiality based on Fair. those those rulings. But that's not the standard. The standard is whatever the case law is in that in that place. And also, as a as a prudential matter, I think that it doesn't make sense for the special counsel to move for her recusal until she does something silly. Like if she, if she, I don't know if she tries to do something silly with the evidence or tries to. Um, uh, I don't know, tr tr tries to do some some weird venue stuff, like wait for her to make some stupid stupid ruling on this case mm -hmm. before you, you move to recuse. And, and I really think that the it was egregious. The special master stuff was absolutely horrible that that was right. allowed to go. It, it's, it is a big deal for, for you to basically ignore the law and just apply whatever, just, you know, fee fees and essentially say, in your opinions that the president has a different standard um, to be applied to them. So I think that what she did in those in that case was a big major deal, but I don't think that they should move until she does something stupid. And also so the, politically, not that this should take into consideration, but the fact that it's being had in the Southern District of Florida and it's before this judge who is based on the special master council, special master's rulings seems very favorable to Trump, I think will 
maybe be some buttress that there's a fair process here but I, to be honest i don't think it'll matter they'll, yeah they'll at, the, yeah, at this point I, I think the battle lines are drawn politically i don't think it'll yeah. matter at all but but so then the other question i've got is doesn't if let's say jack smith wants to avail himself of trying to like file a motion to get the case reassigned doesn't he have a limited time frame to do it like i was reading something about like a 10 mm. day window or something like that like within 10 days um to get a case reassigned or can he try to push that at any point during the trial uh, for reassigning i don't know for recusal i'm not i don't know if there's is there a limit to recusal for when you can do it like suppose that something comes out late in the game i don't know that there's it would make sense to have a recusal that's tied right. to when the indictment comes out so um, my inclination my intuition is that there is no time delimiter on when you're supposed to seek recusal um probably within some reasonable amount of the of your knowledge of it i don't know if it, maybe that's like implied somewhere that if you if you know about a particular thing that could trigger some questions about recusal and you don't bring it up in the first you maybe you waive it so maybe there's some like implied waiver of stuff um but i don't know that there's a absolute statutory bar on when you can bring the motions okay and then the last thing i've got on this particular question is doesn't Jeopardy apply like once the the jury starts like if she if she makes a motion like if she dismisses charges or whatever doesn't Jeopardy apply and and the case is like shot like can she do anything that can basically fuck the trial and beyond Jack Smith's ability to um appeal it uh so the trial court has a great deal of authority in in criminal cases and it's it's a big deal who your judges um it it just is it's it's a big mm -hmm. deal with sentencing it's a big deal on in every possible respect and so um i don't want to be her to say that she has no influence on the case she does there's limits to what she can do though like uh, if there is a acquittal very very little that can be done to you can't really appeal an acquittal because mm -hmm. of, of of the constitution and very hard at that point to you know uh, that, that's why like if you're gonna file appeals you do it before before the um the trial typically if you're the prosecution um, there. In terms of dispositive motions at the start, so like let's say that she dismisses the case for, I don't know, lack of probable cause or something stupid like that, or it's because it's, I don't know, um, statute limitations or something, or some nonsense. Right. That can be appealed. And so I, I think that there's not a lot. I, I, I ultimately think it's a strong case. It's a powerful case. It's going to be heard. Uh, she might be able to do everything in favor of Trump, but... The facts and the law ultimately will be what decides the day. I don't really think that uh, she can maybe do some funny business. I don't expect her to be able to just get rid of this case just because. Fair. Okay, so now my question is for Steven, and it's also tangentially related to this, and you kind of triggered this earlier when you were talking about how much of a simp you are for norms and legislation and things like that. So I want to do a bit of a vibe check on you. Okay, so it, it's related to this situation with with uh, Trump in Florida. Okay, but we're actually going to go to California here. Okay, so you know who uh, Diane Feinstein is, right? <laughs> yeah, our Steven. wonderful. Yeah, I don't know if she knows who she is anymore, but yeah, yeah no, no, she. I don't think she does. I think like the the uh, consensus is she's she's not all there. Like total state of cognitive decline. Okay, so so here's the situation. She had shingles for like eight years. It seems like um, earlier this year, and she was basically out of commission mm -hmm. and it took she's she has a, a seat on the senate judiciary committee mm -hmm. and after the midterms because democrats and their caucus were able to expand their majority we were able to actually accelerate the rate at which president biden's judicial nominees made it through committee right so he was able to like fill those vacancies much quicker okay. to the point that he was on track on track to match or exceed even trump's record during the mcconnell Trump situation. Okay. Now, when she had shingles, she couldn't be there, mm -hmm. right? So everybody, myself included for a time, was like, oh, for the love of God, just retire. For the love of God, just quit, retire. Newsom can appoint, you know, some sort of progressive, take your place, somebody who's like a third your age, so like 60, and, you know, the Democrats can keep, like, trucking along. But then another Democrat, Sheldon Whitehouse, pointed out that actually presents a problem. If Dianne Feinstein were to resign, mm -hmm. yes, Newsom could appoint her replacement to fill out the rest of her term. But for her replacement or even a temporary replacement to get put on the Senate Judiciary Committee, Republicans would have to agree to do it. So Democrats would either need a 60-person. 
Yeah, I was going to say, do Republicans need to do it, or do you just need like yes. a 60 vote person to do it in the Senate? Is you either need unanimous consent where nobody objects, okay. or you need a 60 person filibuster proof majority for gotcha, even gotcha. a temporary replacement. Okay. And so Feinstein refused. Uh, she's back now. Like she's being wheeled around. She's like clinging to life, and every Democrat's basically hoping she just makes it through the, the, the remainder of her term. Mm -hmm. But before she came back, she agreed, or her staff agreed, to allow a temporary, so somebody who's already serving in the Democratic caucus in the Senate, to take her place on the Judiciary Committee temporarily. Republicans refused because it was grinding, you know, Biden's nomination process to a halt. And people okay. were pissed, rightly so, because it was an abuse of norms. Okay. Now, if she were to resign, or to, like I said, a permanent or a temporary replacement. Wait, 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 real quick. To put somebody on the Senate Judiciary Committee, is that also a 60 vote thing or is that just a 50? Yes. Okay. Yes. The the full Senate, you would either have to, again, have unanimous yeah. consent. I'm going to, unless there's something tricky you're about to present to me, I'm probably going to agree with this then. Agree with what? With that this is an okay process that they. Do, that they block that, that wait they can that block the, yeah yes yeah oh um, why because why let's say, are there no norms, why? bro there's because, no because, norms because, because, anymore for, for because, judicial nominations because because the reason why is because let's say that you um couldn't you theoretically abuse the process by let's say that somebody is on the senate judiciary community or committee sorry everybody agrees to it and then a senator's like okay well thanks for that i'm going to recuse myself and now we've got newsom appointing like an ultra fucking progressive or ultra right wing or whatever well, person what, what, that no, automatically no, no, no. goes on the senate judiciary committee no. No, 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 yeah, no, ahead. because they would have to, so they would have to resign. The only way Newsom, the only way like a, a Democratic governor can appoint a replacement is if that person resigns from the Senate fully. Yeah, but that's right? what I mean by it. Couldn't that theoretically happen? Like when you're voting on who goes on the committee, you're voting on the person. And if, and if a new person shows up in the, in, in, in Congress, like, shouldn't we say that if we had to vote for the first one, shouldn't you also have to vote and approve the second one? Yeah, but but I but I guess what I'm saying is Republicans would block they would block a, any they they are blocking any temporary or permanent replacement. It's not it wouldn't be just like a far left ultra progressive because that wasn't the case with even a temporary replacement. They just refused to have a vote to allow somebody to sit in Feinstein's chair. Somebody like I mean, it could have been Bernie, but it also could have been you know um, Angus how King these, from. How often are these appointments done? What appointments? Oh, like the judicial? The yeah. Oh, like, I mean, Pisco might have more knowledge about that than I do, but I mean, fairly regularly, like, Biden's appointed, I think, like, 200 or 300, I think, at this point, something like oh, that. Less, less than that. Or I mean, for, like, for, like, the, oh, is it? for the sitting yeah. members on the Senate Judiciary Committee. What's, it, what's the question? For how, how, how often, often do people, people vote on, yeah, on, the, on that committee? How often are people exchanged in that committee or whatever? Like, how does she get in the first time? It, they, it usually lasts, like, the full, like, full congressional terms so like yeah but Congress republicans had, republicans voted on her for the first one right i'm guessing we needed is this not I, making yes, sense I, yes yes yeah. yes i i assume so yeah they were in we, didn't have, they were sorry, in, we haven't had 60 dems in the senate anytime recently have we did i miss this or hand hand okay that that is a good question let me find out how exactly they got put well on they the must senate. have they yeah, must I, have voted I, for initially right i would assume so right what were you saying pisco I don't understand. Like, what is the point of this? Like, is the point for us to condemn the Republicans for no, not no, no? My, qu and not my question, no, my question is: Would you support a carve out, some sort like de the Democratic majority? Because it, it's like anything else. Right now, they need a sixty-person threshold. They could either invoke a rules change or a filibuster carve out to allow the simple majority to fill, like, to po appoint a temporary replacement for Feinstein or a permanent replacement. Of course, of course. I, I don't agree with the filibuster at all. And of course I would be okay with that. I know you I, would. I'm wait, asking wait, wait, wait. Steven. I, I, oh, okay. Oh. I just want to be clear. Yeah. If Steven says he's not in favor of a carve out for the Democrats to, to have a filibuster proof a nomination process for the Democrat, he is a hack. Like there cannot <laughs> okay. be a world yeah. <laughs> in which he's not okay with Democrats playing shenanigans to for judicial appointments after what the republicans have pulled so i i hope that i'm not about to hear him say that democrats shouldn't do everything buddy i hope too. To, to, i yes. hope too. and i, I think just between the two I'm of us just kidding i'm just kidding i am in favor of abolishing not even the filibuster i think the whole senate should be right, abolished Yo, and i think go, that the go. entire house no, should why be are you doing no no, no that would be my i know favorite. you're not That's about to just because say republicans have done that shenanigans yeah i so i think we should i think the whole senate needs to go it's bullshit why does land vote i agree
Bro, 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 bro. Why are you, why are you being topic. so sassy right topic. now? Every single law in the United States should also oh be God. passed via referendum. We should just abolish Congress. You know what they should do? Be a referendum. Democrats should put a pride flag in uh, Feinstein's chair and piss you off even more so after invoking here, like, here, some this sort is, of... This is how I'm that. thinking, okay? Let's say there's a Senate Judiciary appointments, okay? Let's say Republicans have um, 54 Republicans in the Senate. Um, yeah. Six Democrats come aboard. They vote for everybody. Let's say that one Republican in the Senate... Um, let's say that Republican has a scandal, okay? Rape a bunch of kids, okay? Okay? Mm -hmm. So Senate... Uh, Senate person does this. It's actually fairly probable, sure. I feel like. Senate so person ahead, yeah. does this, Whoa. and then they resign. And then let's say that it's um, from a red state, and let's say the red state governor's like, okay, well, I'm going to appoint, um, I'm going to appoint this temporary senator, and it's a guy who wants to destroy the entire United States, who doesn't believe in any judicial whatever. He's just an asshole, okay? Do you think that that guy should automatically go into that Senate Judiciary community, or should Democrats have a chance to be like, wait a second, we voted in the last guy, and he was- he should. You're missing okay. a crucial right. step. No, You're no, missing no, a cru no, 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 Josiah, Josiah, don't, or ruminate, don't avoid the question. Like, I feel like the reason I jumped in here is because I wanted to kind of pick Destiny's brand on his weird, like, governance sort of thoughts, right? I just don't get why we're so anti just majority. Like, if you have a majority in the Senate, what's wrong with appointing your replacements to committees. People voted for you to have majority control of the chamber. I just, I don't see what's wrong with that. Why, why is 60 like the magic there, number? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that would be a problem. For your own committees, I think that it probably should be like a 51 vote or 50 plus vice president. Oh, but so but it's not. With, well, yeah. then you agree then. No, if it is 60, it, well, well, no, no, because we're not asking if it should be 50 or 60. We're saying, here's the process. Should the process be broken if um, if not there's broken. a replacement, yes, broken, changed, no, changed. Well, no, no, well, that, no, there's changed. nothing, there's, on, you're stop. not breaking stop, 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 anything, stop. Yes. no, no, you're not Ch breaking anything by changing a rule. We're playing word games, these are semantics, okay? When, 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 I, when I say broken, I mean like break the rule, change the rule, it's the same thing, right? Wait, well, is it well, breaking the rule so it's not, not functional? Breaking implies that you're doing something bad, that you're, that's you're breaking exactly the rule. Right. That you're, breaking implies you're doing something against the rules. The, if the, the rule Steven. is that you need 60 votes to confirm somebody to the Senate Judiciary Community and somebody resigns, why should you be able to do it then next Steven, with the 50 let, vote? let me, let me, let me, let no, me just address, let me, you asked me you a question. you agree that's a bad rule, so we should change the rule. Yeah, but changing the rule, you, he's not talking about changing the rule, he's talking about making a carve out for people that, that resign. A, that'd be a rule, change. A rule change. That would be a, that would be a rule change. You would be, you would be taking it from a 60 person filibuster proof majority down to um, just a simple majority. If it's a simple but majority, like breaking, then the whole thing should just be a simple majority, not a carve no, but out breaking for people the, that resign. Breaking the rule, breaking the rule would be putting it up for a vote, getting 52 votes and saying, well, she's on the committee anyway, even though she didn't get 60 votes, right? Obviously changing the rule would be, well, now you only need 51 votes. Like obviously there's a difference here in terms of, because okay. you're respecting the norms Sorry, of the chamber. If you want to say, by, if that is triggering you, then we can say changing the rule instead of breaking the rule. That's fine. You can say changing the rule. Steven, well, no, I want to answer with your... changing the rule though. No, yeah, I, 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 no, no, no. I don't understand how this is so hard to understand. You hold said on. changing wait, 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 wait. the rule. Let me, hold on. No, 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 Hold on. <laughs> you, 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 I don't understand how you're not understanding. Listen to me. Everybody turn your ear, two ears, one mouth, okay? Oh, Listen. God, here we go. Okay? It's very, very, very simple what I'm saying, okay? okay? If the rule is you need X amount of votes in order to confirm somebody or appoint somebody to the Senate Judiciary Committee, then that X amount of votes should be the same if it's a replacement from a resignation or if it's a new session. It shouldn't be X minus 10. Now, we can argue about what X ought to be, but I'm never going to agree with X votes to confirm, X minus 10 votes to uh, appoint a replacement if somebody resigns. Does that make sense? I see what you're saying. So you're saying it's all contingent on how the original person yes. got the committee spot I think I, in the I first think place. For committees, I don't know why it wouldn't be just a simple majority. That sounds fine to me. And if it was a simple majority, then also for reappointments, or, or for, um, yeah, for reappointments, it should also be a simple majority. But even if we did a simple majority, I would say that if, let's say that the Democrats only had, um, on the Senate Judiciary Committee, are the appointments all the majority party or is it split or how does that even work? So I know, I don't know what exactly like the vote is, but I know that when a new Congress, like when a new session begins, both parties negotiate the composition of the committee and the majority always has more seats reflective of that. But I don't know if like, if they have to, like for every person to get a seat on okay, the, so, the so committee it's somewhat, that it has to be six. Sure, so it's somewhat bipartisan then. There's multiple, yes. yeah. Okay, so yes. if it was that you needed 40 votes to get on the Senate Judiciary Committee, let's say it was only 40, right? 
Let's say somebody resigned and then a new person was picked by a governor to join the Senate or whatever. I would say that you still need 40 votes to get that new person on the Senate Judiciary Committee. I don't know what the number of votes is. I don't care what it is. Well, I think it should probably be 50, but whatever it is, it should be the same to replace somebody as it is to appoint somebody. Because if I've got a rule that says in order to get on that committee, you need X number of votes, why would I make an exception for a resignation. What if then somebody gets on that committee that would have never made it otherwise? What if there's somebody that would have gotten that committee that has no support in Congress, but because it was a resignation, we're magically gonna just float them to the Senate Judiciary Committee? I wouldn't, I know, I wouldn't approve of that. But, but but here's the thing, so, so okay, I just, I wanna, maybe I'm missing something, so just wanna go back and clarify something. Okay, man. This was, number one, this really right now is no longer an issue unless like Feinstein chooses to resign because of her health, right? Mm -hmm. But. In the case of a permanent replacement, like if Feinstein resigns from the committee or resigns from the Senate, both, or just even a temporary replacement when she was sick, so the Judiciary Committee could continue its business as it did in full strength and continue to vote on Biden's nominees the way they did, the, the Republicans refused to let any replacement, even temporarily, to take her spot. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, it's... It wasn't like there was a particular, a yeah, particular I think, replacement. I think, I think that's bad. But then the issue is with either that process or that norm. I don't. I think that the, uh, this is something. I think Pisco might even agree with this. I'm not sure. But like, it seems like a lot of our Senate is governed by norms that might not yes. be okay. Yeah, okay. Because when you Let's get listen. certain types of obstructionist parties in there, like fucking McConnell and the Republicans, it's probably not okay. Even though the technically they can do it, it's probably not okay. For instance, to say we're not going to vote on a Supreme Court pick for fucking three years. We're just not even going to fucking vote. But I'm on not going to let you off the hook. I'm not. Okay. Let there you is no hook, hook that you think no, you're no, even no, letting me off of. I'm wholly consistent here. Yeah, go for what it. What happens? What happens when Republicans break? all those norms what do you do in response then you and codify your response, them wait your response is that democrats should continue to abide by those norms with respect to judicial appointees and uh you know just wag their fingers while republicans do the opposite and for instance let me give you an example if a there was a um the same equivalent of amy coney barrett happened with respect to a a Democratic appointee, um, or the same thing that happened to Merrick Garland back when Obama was president happened with a Republican, what would you say then? Would you say Democrats shouldn't engage in the same thing Republicans did to their advantage? If, wait, say that again? So, so if, if you have a Republican president and a Democratic Senate majority and there's a vacancy on the Supreme Court, should Democrats hold the position open until there's a Democrat the in the same White House? As, the same as they, uh, the Republicans did. That would be breaking the, uh, you know, the old norm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it a lot. No, dude, stop. That's oh, a, it's an extreme position. Hold on, you fucking retard. It can't just be Republicans <laughs> broke it once, and now we're going to break everything and watch the country fall apart. The country is nothing without norms and laws. Do you understand that? Hey, what is the wait, 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 no, no, no. I need Pisco mm. to agree with that because he's a fucking lawyer. Or, you're, or I don't know why the fuck you even work your job. Do you agree that some amount of norms and laws are required yes, for agree. the country to fucking yes, work? Okay, I, you I agree, agree that the whole reason why the, the uh, we initially lost that Supreme Court pick was because of both sides playing football with no, the norms. I don't right? No, okay. no, I don't agree. No. Okay, all right. All right, we'll have that conversation at some point then. Yeah. Well, no, like, because uh, the issue is that you have one side that's not dealing in any sort of good faith. And so the, the logical position is just to create a better, more structurally sound process. And in this case, it's making it to where a majority of members can confirm replacements to committees. Sure, I agree. Like that's a I'm, never, that's a more I'm never long... going to disagree with codifying some norms. I'll never disagree with that. So for instance, I'd say if we make it a law that the Senate must vote every 14 days on a um, on like a Supreme Court pick or any judicial pick, I wouldn't be opposed to that law. That's fine. Codify it. Make it an actual law so you're forcing votes. It has to happen. It's right. their job. It should happen anyway. You know the... I, so, but the irony here is if they were going to try to codify this into law now, they would also have to break a norm to do it because there's absolutely no fucking way they would get 60 votes in the Senate to codify the rule and make it a simple majority. You understand? So, like, even in this situation, like, to do it your way, Democrats would have to invoke a nuclear car vacuum. Okay, so then, okay, so then, okay, so then, what, so then what happens then when a, when we've got a Republican president and then we've got a Democratic Senate and then there's a Supreme Court mm -hmm. vacancy? And then the Democrats don't want to nominate anybody. And then we get a yeah. um, Democratic president and a Republican Senate. And now there's a second Supreme Court vacancy. And now the Republicans don't want to. Do we just do we just go back and forth like that until the entire country goes down the fucking shitter? Are we just well, done? Yeah, Are we like just you, done governing you, at that point? Well, no, because under that, no, no, because all that we're it sounds like all that we're saying is that. 
the rules should just be a majority vote, right? So in the case where you have a like, say you have fifty Republicans, I, I guess it would be fifty-one you're, I don't Republicans know if you're, in the Senate. I don't know who you're talking to right now. Okay, because if, if you want to, if you want to, Conaboy is still on the. If you want, no, 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 no. If you want to codify something, Conaboy, I'm one hundred percent in favor of that. If you want to make it pass a law or process that says this has to happen, I'm one hundred percent in favor of that. But that's not what these two guys are talking about. These guys are talking about doing whatever dirty trick you can to break whatever norm you can, because Republicans have broken in the past and no, continue to do that until the government either breaks no. apart or we win so many majorities. No, it sounds, it sounds like no, no. It sounds like they're just saying. I don't understand why you you think that they're. It's like backdoor stuff that they're suggesting. They're saying they should just formally change the rule to allow for a simple majority vote. Am I wrong? Wait, are yes, you guys you are saying wrong. Like, exactly yes, you are wrong? We're no, 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 no. That's exactly what we're. Wait, hold on, wrong. Pisco. Like, did you wait, not say? Wait, hold on, Pisco. Did you not say? Maybe I misunderstood you. Then I'm sorry. It sounded like you said if a Republican president showed up and there was a mm -hmm. Democrat majority in the Senate that they shouldn't nominate. Yeah, so, they shouldn't vote on their Supreme Court yeah. pick. We're, we're, we're talking should, about two different things. Wait, wait, we're wait, talking wait, about. Let Pisco answer that. Let it, wait, don't answer it. They should all vote them down. Okay, so that is what you're what? saying. I would yes. be in support okay. of not even giving, yes. and, and, and just be clear, I would be in support of not even giving a hearing. Yes. Yes, okay, there you go, Econoboy. Mm. So that was their Wait, position. Wait, Econoboy yes. is still on this, well, but Econoboy no, no, is still dealing with the original not, topic. But that's totally no, inconsistent, I'm not, I'm, and that's I'm, totally not inconsistent with what Econoboy yeah, is saying. Yeah, like, because I I, yeah. I think that what Pisco, what Pisco is saying, again, it's just a threshold argument, right? It's no. There's nothing necessarily wrong with, like, no, no, it is, because I think Pisco would say there's nothing necessarily wrong with the party that controls the chamber Basically Deciding saying we're not going to hear nominees, but the issue with the 60 vote threshold is that the party that does not control the chamber can dictate that, and that's kind of the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, I don't know why you're saying exactly. That's not what you're arguing for. No, if you're no, arguing, that's, you're that's, saying that Democrats should break norms and never put a new Supreme Court pick up if it was a Republican president. Is that not what you said? Given the fact the Republicans did it in the past. Yes, yes okay, that is what you're saying. I don't know why you no, keep no, agreeing no, with Econoboy. You're like that's trying to live in both worlds. No, no, you're, no, no, no. Econoboy, no, hold on, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. No. Econoboy, you acknowledge he's saying that <laughs> norms should be broken then until the process changes. Do you acknowledge norm that or no? Norms should be broken. No, but he's talking, no, Econoboy, the only thing that would make this possible, uh, or in the cases that we're talking about, the Supreme Court thing is already possible, would be to have majoritarian rule in the Senate. And, that, and that's how the Republicans were able to prevent a... Uh, nomination of Merrick Garland's because they controlled the Senate and that was what gave them the authority to not to ignore Obama's appointee and all I'm saying is why should Democrats not do that in response okay well but P Pisco I think the difference is that <laughs> Democrats no, let wouldn't... him have it that's what well, he wants hold, hold on no no because no, Pisco in this Senate, no no Pisco I think what I think the confusion is that you're not saying Democrats in minority should be able to block nominees. You're saying only not. in the case that they're in majority should they be able to block nominees, well, I, right? And I, I so don't, I don't agree with. I'm not like destiny. I don't agree with minority rule. I agree with <laughs> democracy and majority rule. Wait a second. How many wow. um, for s Supreme Court picks? How many votes do you need to hold a vote? Now it's a simple a vote no, oh well, a vote? that, that you, that's dictated that. that's dictated by the senate majority leader that was mcconnell's decision because he only had 54 senators mm -hmm. in his caucus at the time he didn't have like a filibuster proof majority okay it's and then the senate to majority. vote on to, to to confirm a supreme court pick simple majority at this simple point majority they, when you say simple wait, wait, wait. when you say simpler simple majority are you implying that you're implying that for every future thing they're going to do that i forget the name of the process yeah. in order to yeah that they changed the rules no, it wasn't like what, a one time like literally exception. literally oh, when trump okay, took okay. office literally when trump took office the democrats immediately filibustered gorsuch's nomination yeah. and then the republicans were like well now it's just a majority like, like the republicans did exactly what we're describing but like to help them instead of democrats obviously okay yeah i mean if that's a new process then follow the process how how can you oh, how can bitch. you say how can you say <laughs> that's the, if Democrats that's the, if they should... codify that rule then follow the codified rule. Well wait well wait a minute the codified rule that you're talking about the in or that we're talking about right now which is not having a hearing that has nothing to do with a vote that's whoever is in the majority simply the lead so in this case it would be Chuck Schumer uh -huh. in this hypothetical just simply it has nothing to do with a vote he would just not allow a nomination uh, process to occur. It, it oh, has yes. nothing so to do with Let's hear him answer this question. If there, the, the same thing that happened with Garland occurs, would you be in support or would you be against Chuck Schumer preventing a hearing from being had on that nominee from a Republican president? Uh, like I said, I have to think, it depends on who the nominee is and I have to think about it a lot because the issue is you're, you're running, like here, here's a question, would you, on the same vein, um, if there was a Republican president and a debt ceiling thing was coming up, do you think that we should negotiate with the debt ceiling to get stuff from the Republican president? 
should we who sh should who negotiate the, the Democrats should they should Democrats no, use it as should a, they threaten, as a should they threaten a default wedge. on the debt if they don't get some kind of concession no, I don't think so I don't no. think wait so. why not Republicans did it to get stuff because because the economic consequences would be too severe that would be I'm like a, total wait what's the judicial what's ceiling. the judicial consequence if we start having a vacated supreme court I, that that's not this that is nowhere near as as ca catastrophic i mean as doesn't it a, depend a on what on what the no, Supreme because there'd be, be eight hearing? other justices. What no, if interracial? Eight... Yeah, there's eight justices. So we could have ties, right? What do you like? Highly if... unlikely. Wait, 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 highly we've had we've had ties before, and there's there are rules of construction for how we deal with ties, and and it has to do with you know it's not binding precedent. It only applies to the case before. Um, there are ways to deal with with. We've had even numbers on the Supreme Court before. It's not going to end the institution. What happens in the uh, event of a tie in the Supreme Court? It's, it's not a uh, the lower opinion. I believe the lower opinion. Uh, wins and it's not binding Supreme Court precedent. But I could be wrong about that. Any Supreme Court watchers, y'all can let me know in the comments if I got that wrong. Um, but but yeah, I, I just think it's it's preposterous. That's name. Mean, you're not sure whether or not you'd be in support of Schumer or them. I, I just think I just think it's preposterous. You act like it's so easy that we just like play fucking nuclear football by destroying every fucking norm. What, what's the like, alternative? Oh, well, that's that's the my alternative question. Is to, the, alternative? the alternative is to push to get norms codified as much as possible. So it's not they just have a matter no, of who can they, fuck over no the other vested, person's harder. Don't you think that the Republicans have no vested interest in codifying this shit? Because if it's ambiguous and it's just based on good faith, then they can pick and choose. They played what both sides when it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They, they they played it when it was very uh, very close to the presidential election, and they said no, yeah. it's not allowed. And when it was very close for them, they they allowed. They it. broke and a so norm, created a norm, and then broke their own goddamn norm in four years on the same thing. Well, they broke precedent by not like having gotta, a hearing. Sounds like you need to fight for it legislatively. Well, fight for it. Get well, different people elected says, and fight over what it. Destiny says, "Is I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I would do the same thing. I would. You know, they hit me. I'm not sure if I hit them back. But if you steal my pencil, I'll shoot you. I, I just don't see the, <laughs> okay the, the, the <laughs> versions okay. of Destiny that you know you're always Jesus. willing to uh, with an acts of aggression. I like how personal. Well, at, well, this I'm is so an acts of aggression. <laughs> These are political systems, and I know that it bothers you, especially being a fucking guy from New York. But sometimes the rest of the country disagrees with you, and you got to fucking okay. live with that decision. Uh, the whole the country is I'm not gonna, progressive. I'm, the whole country is not liberal. Sometimes there's going to be parts where the American people disagree with you. You got to fucking live with it. That's part of the process. Steven, I'm going to shoot from the hip you. here. I'm sorry. I'm going to shoot. I'm going <laughs> to shoot from the hip here, and maybe I'm missing yeah, something glaring. But I want you. I want you to explain to because here's the thing. I've listened to you talk about Ukraine and how when Ukraine is resisting Russia, an aggressor who is militarily superior, you say that listen, basically that they have a right to self defense even if it would result in scorched earth. And I understand that we're talking about war versus politics, but the logic of self-defense, does that not apply here? No. Even if there is a risk, why well, not? Because Ukraine and Russia are at war with each other. It's like an existential threat to the country. This is our political process that's still arguably working as intended. Okay, wow. I, I, to me, wow. yeah, I, I, I fundamentally I disagree. I see self-defense. I see self-defense here. This, to me, is political self-defense, and I don't understand what the alternative is when Republicans just egregiously act in bad faith, and they had, they have no incentive to engage. No, in no, good but faith. like I think I feel like you guys are speaking past each other again. Republicans did codify these things in the Senate rules, if I'm not mistaken. They didn't just go around the rules; they had control 100%. of the chamber, so they changed the rules to favor them. And, and by change the rules to favor them, it's just in the short term, right? Because I think that by changing the Senate to be a more majoritarian institution, it sort of long-term favors Democrats, right? Because I think generally the majority of the Abso country is fucking pretty lutely. democratic, right? Yes. And so it's just Not in the short it term. it should matter, by the way. If we're setting up our institutions, it shouldn't be to make the Democrats better off. It should no, no, be I, know, I know, but, but that's, that's kind of, I'm just bonus. saying that, I'm just like saying that, that to eliminate the point that like, I don't think Republicans are doing what's like in the long-term best interest of the country. I think they're just doing what gives them political wins today, and they don't really care about good institutional design. What I'm saying is they've sort of fallen backward into good institutional design because I think it's better that majorities, instead of 60 votes, can confirm Supreme Court justices. But that's all proper procedure, right? If, if the Democrats right. said, we're just going to pass everything in the Senate by a majority and get rid of the filibuster, I don't see how that's like destroying a norm or it's like you're just following the procedure and lowering the threshold of votes i don't i don't see how that's well, like that's that's my, i think i feel like because i feel like I did, no that's not true i don't know why you say that i think that ideologically there's an issue with passing major legislation with 50 votes i think that that because you could see wild swings in legislation it represents big potential changes from congress that might not necessarily represent the majority will of the country like i think 60 votes on major legislation is okay but that's good though. i don't think the issue is that we need 60 votes i think the issue is that we can't get 60 
votes. I think the issue but is you, that Congress right. has become so partisan well, that it's become impossible for either side to negotiate. Yeah, Although but Biden's the question is, is if 60 votes, does that actually solve that problem, right? I think that there's many other governments, like there's many other experiments of governments that we can look back at. Mm -hmm. And pretty much every, I mean, I would say that most developed countries have a significantly more majoritarian system than we yes. do, like by an order of magnitude. Yes. And it doesn't seem like any of those countries have issues that you're describing where like, oh, every year, like we have a totally different welfare system and every year we have totally different government services and every year we have totally different rules and rates. No, no, like I obviously mean, is that majoritarian what you're saying is that is that true? I don't have the I don't have the world knowledge to know, but like, for instance, like in the UK, like, don't they fight over like NHS funding every single year? Like, aren't there well, really they, big they fights have... over a lot of European social programs every single well, year, like Macron in France and employment and everything? I thought I thought they do fight over a lot of their social yeah, stuff every but, single year. But all the but all those economic issues are <clears> passed. It can be passed with majorities anyway because they're budget resolutions in the Senate, right? So no, any any criticism of that can affect the U.S. institutions as well, right? And so. I just I think that when you look at governments that are more majoritarian, mm -hmm. I don't think you see like significant policy instability. I think what you do see is more ability for the government to move. Now, some people don't like that. Like conservatives have been in power in the UK for almost a decade and a half at this point. So obviously labor is like, oh, that fucking sucks because the conservatives can kind of do whatever they want. But that's what people are voting for. So if you vote for a conservative government, you get conservative policies. I just think that that's fundamentally a better principle than like, we should set up institutions to be so static that it's very difficult. Because yeah, sure. that in and of that, itself. You can make that argument if you want, but you're arguing against something fundamentally in opposition to how the United States government was originally set up. Which by the way, isn't no, no, like the best. No, 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 that is garbage. The, the, the bedrock principle of our government is separation of powers. No, and that you're, is hold, you're dead fucking wrong. What are you talking, we literally have two completely separate branches to our legislative part of our government that both have Equal power. That's what I'm saying. No, they do. They have different functions. There's a separation of powers. No, no, no. They, that's they not. Both that's not collectively a collectively hold the legislative authority of the United States. But a bedrock principle of our country is separation of powers. That separation is maintained whether it's a 50 vote majority to pass legislation in the Senate or whether it's a 60 vote uh, majority. It's to pass it. the fact that we have two houses that are both evenly capable of passing or vetoing legislation, right? You need the House and the Senate on board with it. Yep. My understanding is that, historically speaking, that's pretty rare. That's a pretty exceptional that's not, part of U.S. That's not process. Necessarily, so, that's not necessarily anti-majoritarian. Like, Pisco no, no, might I'm have a better idea I'm not saying it's anti-majoritarian. I'm saying that, like, that's by definition, our process is, like, pretty slow compared to other yeah, countries. Yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of that gridlock. I'm in favor of the gridlock sure. that's And we vote on a separate president that can veto any legislation I, coming listen, out of that. I, right? I, agree with, I agree with the gridlock. Sure, okay, hold on. Okay. Our, I'm just saying, don't in, say in, that it's not built-in gridlock. We have a lot of built-in gridlock in our system. No, 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 but the gridlock that you're saying is built-in is this particular rule of the filibuster, which I think is No, hold on. I didn't. No, I'm not the, arguing not in particular for the filibuster. I'm just saying that our system has an exceptional amount of gridlock built into it, probably more I, than most countries. Right. Okay, and, and I think that the we already have enough counter majoritarian <laughs> institutions. Yeah, we yes. should have a this little country. bit less. We have gridlock. we have electoral colleges, which is our extremely favored uh, of small states. We yes. already have the the allocation of the Senate. Uh, we already don't have legislative representation in various parts of America. Why do we need yeah. more counter-majoritarian yeah, influences? That right there, that's the thing that I, I've yet to see you grapple with because to me it was like you were on the cusp of it right there. I you mentioned how gridlock. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Let right. me, hang on. You mentioned oh, the gridlock no. that's built in. Do you, <sighs> yeah. do you appreciate how conservatives in this country are so systemically advantaged by norms, yes, traditions, I've and institutions. I've literally had this exact same conversation a million times on stream before. That's why I've said that, like, for voting for the president, I probably would be okay for instance for like a simple majority there because we already favor land so much in the Senate that like there might be a little bit too much gridlock or there might be a little bit too much favoring institutional power that a minority voters sure. have. So you could probably give on some area and it wouldn't destroy the concept of bipartisanship right. in the U.S. government. That's probably true. Yes. So 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 basically, so that so the my question. I don't know if Pisco and Akana Boy are with me on this, but here's my question. So when you factor in some of the stuff that Pico mentioned, the Electoral College, the dispensation of the Senate, separation of powers, federalism, all these things that favor a conservative approach to thwart progress, and then the proxy of conservatives in the political movement today, the Republican Party, then abuse norms and systems which already favor them to, like, they break, they break these norms and institutions whenever it's convenient, they act in bad faith. They maximize that advantage. Why are you so hellbent on Democrats playing, like they're, they're blindfolded, one hand tied behind their back, they're already on uneven, hostile terrain. At what point can we say, okay, it's time to take the blindfold off, we can use both hands now, and we can start hitting back, be it in the form of 
you know, a rule change on the Senate Judiciary Committee, revoking blue slips, another thing that the, the Senate Judiciary Committee could do to get Biden more judicial appointments. Here's, okay, to, let me, because this guy keeps fanning in chat, and I brought this up earlier, okay? Here's here's a question, okay? And you could okay. both tell me the answer for it, okay? Um, All right. My understanding was that under Obama, we were having a really hard time getting certain judges nominated. So yes. Harriet Reid was the one, or Harry Reid was initially the one that triggered this nuclear option in order to start getting appointments. Yes. Do you think that if it weren't for that, do you think that McConnell would have done the same when it came to I think that, Merrick Garland? Yeah, I think McConnell. I think McConnell is a strategic norm breaker. I think that the. I think that had he yep. needed to invoke a nuclear carve out for his agenda, he would have done it. As the. I mean, the Jim, well, really quick, but ruminate just just to be clear. He literally did this within the same term because he he said the principle I'm establishing is we don't appoint Supreme Court justices in the midst of a presidential election. And right. then three weeks before I think. No, no, I'm sorry. It was it was I think it was even after the presidential. No, no. Was it three weeks before? I don't know. It was like right fucking right by it was in October the presidential election. Where, where she it was, was in confirmed. October. OK. Yeah. Within three weeks in October, McConnell said, well, we control the Senate. So we're going to appoint the person to yes. the Supreme Court. Like this so, is the guy that obviously does not give a shit, and yeah, the so, broader Republican Party does not give a shit about even the norms that they try to establish. It's obviously just short-term political gain. Yeah. So Stephen, I don't know. I'm not reading chat. I don't know who said what, but but no. I McConnell I claimed house. was it less house. <laughs> does, tell me it wasn't less house. There's, I, then I, did, I brought this up before anybody even linked it initially because okay, okay, I thought so, about uh, okay, with the so, nuclear so, option for how it initially got there. But yeah, now people are okay, like the so, Harry Reid so, stuff. So, so listen, so the Harry Reid thing. So McConnell said he did warn Harry Reid, listen, if you invoke the nuclear option, so Obama's executive and judicial appointments can go through with a simple majority. When the shoe is on the other foot, we will do it to you. He did claim that. But I don't think it's not a turn based RPG. If McConnell saw that his agenda involved breaking or twisting a norm to favor that agenda, he would absolutely do it, as Econoboy points out with the Supreme Court situation. There was no precedent. There, Democrats didn't do anything that would prompt McConnell to hold Obama's uh, vacancy open with Merrick Garland. He just did it unprovoked. That was unprompted. And then when he broke his own fucking norm in 2020 with Amy Coney Barrett, again, it was unprompted. He had the majority the whole time. So no, the idea that McConnell will only act if Democrats do a thing first. It's absolute bullshit. And by the way, the only reason Harry Reid invoked the nuclear option is because half, literally half of the blockages that ever occurred of like a filibuster or any sort of like cloture invocation occurred under Obama's presidency in all of U.S. history. Half of the blockages of a minority party of the president's nominees occurred under Obama. That's how obstructionist these fucks were. So it was McConnell who abused norms then. And Harry Reid said, if you don't stop, I'm going to make an exception because you can't just prevent the president from nominating who he wants to nominate. But Destiny would say, Destiny would say, no, Obama shouldn't have any lower federal court judges. They shouldn't break the rules to allow the federal benches to be filled. No, which was what I Democratic would say is we should break whatever norm we need to to pass the agenda we think is important. And I'm sure nothing bad will come from that. That's what oh. I would say. <laughs> okay, so here's the, here's the thing is that like, what you have to accept is that they are going to continue to break the norms. And we, I agree with you, Stephen, on principle. I would like it if we codified these things and we made it so that they had to be in law and that we didn't have to worry about the nuclear football games. But the reality is we are standing on our principles while they run circles around us, continuing to break them. So you just have to say, I'm okay with that. And maybe one day we'll figure out. I don't know if they are running circles around us. Like They've Hillary outlined. won a lot of votes. Okay, she didn't win the election. And she didn't get the Oval process. Office, man. She did it. <laughs> but after after Trump, who is arguably one of the most fascist presidents at the very least in recent history, we had a huge swing back to a massive progressive president who's done yeah, but, a ton of bipartisan <laughs> legislation, more than yeah, anybody but, thought possible, and he's doing it in a relatively bipartisan manner. I think. No, that's true. I think to some extent, I think Biden is ruling with a moral mandate. Like it is really hard. I think one of the reasons why Republicans are so hell bent on fucking trans issues is because I think Biden has made himself relatively unimpeachable, not by law but just by character, right? I think if Biden is playing within the rule books, he's working with both sides really fucking hard. He's working to protect McCarthy in the White House. He's worked with McConnell in the Senate. And in doing so, he's had a really successful presidency with the fucking slimmest margins ever. I don't know. I feel like that style of leadership is working. I don't know if the highly antagonistic, fuck all the norms, get rid of the filibuster, 51 votes for everything. I don't know if he would have had the same success with that. I think he arguably rules with a moral mandate. Maybe, but no, I but could also be a huge cuck. Yeah. It's not a, it's not about like, because what we're saying and the leadership style of Biden is not incompatible with each other. 
right? We just have to look at the effects of this sort of norm breaking from one side only. Yeah, but isn't Biden of that, doing like, well, it sounds like you guys would be in favor of like Biden invoking what, the 14th Amendment for uh, financial aid stuff or for Biden to invoke, um, uh, fuck, there was one other thing that I forgot. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Well, it was the 14th Amendment the for um, yeah, yeah, no, no, the debt it was, ceiling. It was, yeah, um, it was the 14th Amendment for the debt ceiling yeah. and then invoking uh, another thing for like the student aid stuff. Like, it's like but well, he it's, hasn't it's, done that, right? It's not necessarily about that. I think the reason that the courts, I think the reason that the courts get focused on is because it's such an incredibly powerful and frankly unaccountable institution to large part, right? I mean, the fact is well, that there's nine people on the Supreme Court that can completely upend entire segments of policy that it could be passed by Congress or not. It just depends on if they decide if it's unconstitutional or not. The reality is like the the consequences of the one side norm breaking from the Republicans is we've banned abortion federally in this country. Um, and now we have to rely on state governments to do that. Yeah, but look and now at we have a court that's about. attacking even, so many other aspects of our lives. We didn't right? even I mean, legalize abortion bad. federally, right? So of course we lost it the same way that we got it, which was via the Supreme Court. No, no, I understand, right? But I'm saying that the result, the, the way that we got there was through a series of breaking of norms by Republicans and playing really, really hard power in politics. And so it's not necessarily the case that Biden has to do, you know, all these super hard nosed things. You know, I think there's probably an argument for some of that stuff. Sure. But that's the case with any administration. It's just that the institutional design that we have clearly is susceptible to partisan polarized you know political actors right and that's bad and we should probably design our institutions better and in the case that you know it seems like ruminate and pisco and it seems like lichen as well are saying one of the ways to do that is just make it a majority to pass things out of the senate i don't know whether it be a nomination or a bill. i would be i'd be okay with that if the norms change if they found a way to change the norms then fine change the norms that's okay take a position are you in favor of the norm changing or not that's that hasn't been what we've been arguing about this entire time. What do you he mean, like take by a law. position? You were he arguing about breaking norms. That was the difference. But no, 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 what, what do you, if you like? What do you if mean you by change? What do you mean by change the law? Like the, the there's yeah, not there's think? not a I, as far as I'm aware, I'm not, I'm not sure if there's like a, a code book that says you have to have 60 votes he wants in the, the Senate norms to codified, pass. Wait, is there I mean. isn't isn't there isn't that like what process in the Senate is? It's like no, there's some like, code there's like there's like Senate rules. They're, they're there's rules, standing they're. rules, right? Yeah, like there's standing rules in the Senate, but that's not the same. That's not like a law. I don't think you. I don't know. I don't know if there are some laws. There are some laws that are relevant to conduct in the in the chambers, like what the the title of laws will be there are there's a are statutes that are passed that pertain to conduct in the chamber so i don't want to be heard yeah that there isn't loser. anything relevant but but the the major rules that are followed on the day-to-day -day, those are decided by unicamerally that is to say i one just chamber decides it's, well, for itself but doesn't it seems like the principle you established earlier was that like with the committee situation with feinstein was that because she had to get confirmed with 60 votes, which I guess we're not sure on, but let's just say that's true. She, the replacement should get confirmed by 60 votes, right? But yes. if, if like the standard process to change rules in the Senate has been a majority vote of the Senate, how is that breaking a norm by saying that the senators in the future should change the rules by a majority vote to make all of these things majority votes in the, I, I don't know, how is that breaking any norm? It's just changing the standing rules through the normal procedure. Yeah, if you change the standing rules, that's fine. But I just, I didn't agree with the carve out. <laughs> Wait, can, can I the carve out is a rule change. Like you're making, I, I want to be clear. I don't agree I, with that rule change. I think it's if you need 60 votes to get somebody in, you should need 60 votes for the replacement. If you want to change it to 50 votes to get somebody in, then make it 50 votes for the replacement. But having 60 votes to get somebody I mean, in, not just cause, but because if we've decided a position is important enough to require 60 votes, then it should require 60 votes to replace the person. There's lower thresholds for replacements all the time. The, the threshold to replace someone who, who dies as a senator is just the governor points out. The threshold to have a recess appointment is lower in the constitution. There's no, there's no like logical. Make a policy argument about in this case. I made the policy. Sense. I mean, you just don't like it. No, no. Your policy argument is it should be the same because it should be the same. It just makes sense, and it would be nice to have that parallel. But I don't understand. Would like, you be a, okay, a, for instance, with like the um, with the Senate like um, appointing like a, I guess like a replacement president? <laughs> no. Okay, really quick, no, Dustin. Wait, quick why not? Would you be really quick, Dustin? Would you be okay with every single thing that we said if it just took effect the next Senate, like the next Congress? Uh, no. I mean, like if they change the rules now, I'd be okay with it. If they're like, yeah, we can do Senate Judiciary appointments with fifty votes, and then also the replacement can be fifty votes, I'd probably be fine with it. I just don't know why you'd have a difference for the replacement to sit on the committee versus uh, the. Okay, well, I'm I'm getting the impression that like you would pass a law if you could that said sixty vote threshold that said. You, you know, we pass a law by, by the Senate. Judiciary appointments? No, I mean, like, if you own the Senate, then you should. 
ocean. Oh, if you own the Senate, then you should probably be able to make the appointments that you need for the Senate. I think a simple majority is probably fine. I don't know. I don't know what the rationale is for that being 60 votes, unless somebody has it. Let's turn the temperature down. I Let's not, you cuck fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the hey, temperature's man, I'm fine. I'm sorry I got heated, y'all. I just, sometimes I get heated, you know, I get, this gives me passion. And, and the thought that you would just lie down and take it from the Republicans and, and you're not sure whether or not you'd give it back. That just, it got me. That, that is very anti-destiny. I agree. Wow. That that strikes such a contrast with who Steven is. I'm just such a Seems process like great slut, you know. I am too. I, I love process. But, but if the someone other breaks person it. breaks the norm. <laughs> well, okay. Do, do you agree, though, in terms of, like, norms, that it's inherent that they be reciprocal and reliable? And if you have one party, one of the two parties, not being reciprocal or reliable, that you really don't have a norm in the end? Like, are you I don't know. I'm not sure. To that? I have to think about it. The problem is when I think of my own life, if I've tried to break norms, I get fucked for it every single time. And it seems like I have a certain rule book that I have to play by, even if other people aren't. So, for instance, people will make up lies about me. If I do it to somebody else, I get hugely fucking shut on for it, even though the other person continues to make up lies about me. Right? So it seems like there's probably some moral goodness, or there's probably some moral mandate you get by following norms, even if the other side isn't necessarily doing it. But when both sides decide to descend into norm breaking, then you just get chaos and everything begins to fall apart, like acceleratedly so. That seems I, I will to be the grant case. you this, Destin. There are some norms that I would be, I do not want the Democrats to break, even if Republicans do. I, there like are what? those that, that exist. So, Give examples. Po political prosecutions. I don't, if it's the case that Republicans engage and, and Rob Knorr and people like him accuse Democrats of doing that, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't be in support of the norm against uh, political prosecutions. Using the death ceiling as a negotiation wedge, that's one that I would submit. I don't think yeah. the Democrats so, should ever so do I, that. I don't think we have to grant his whole outlook on every issue for mm -hmm. Stephen to acknowledge that there are some norms. You know, the, another one is like, alleging that all elections are fraudulent and stolen when you lose. Right? Sure, right. I wouldn't be in and favor And there are some that. norms that I'd probably be in favor of breaking. For instance, if there was a Supreme Court thing that opened up and somebody was like, listen, we're gonna break the norm one time because you guys did, I'd probably, that's what I said, I have to think about it, I'd probably be okay with it because they did, they, <laughs> not only did they break the norm once, they did go back immediately after because if you tried to use that argument of McConnell, like, hey, there well, hold on, you guys don't wanna appoint anybody to during, during Trump's term, right? Because we said that you yeah. can't do that in the middle of the term. They broke it up and probably was like, you know I, what, I, I we're taking it. one I, for free, right? I'd probably say that's okay. I, the sure. only reason on, on, on this stuff and on the legislation front that I feel differently is, is, is one is like a political philosophy of the majoritarian with respect to big legislation. I don't have the same fears as you do of the, the ratchet towards wild swings. And on the judges, I think the federal bench is so important and that the norm breaking was so flagrant and so horrible by the Republicans that, that those norms are essentially dead and the, their use in preservation would only serve to decrease the, the functioning of our Republic and not like make any kind of sense to uphold but i do think it makes a, a sense to uphold other norms even though there's constant violations on the other side so sure. i will grant and maybe that. it might be the case that maybe the republicans will all go back to being norm followers once uh the <laughs> republican party falls apart and reassembles itself after this trump DeSantis fight so maybe they'll okay. be normal I've, again i've got again. one more judicial related hypothetical in terms of norms i want to ask okay, all, all of go. you about and then i gotta dip too okay so it, blue slips uh pisco are you familiar with these the blue slip veto in the senate judiciary process um, so no, basically, remember. basically, if there's like a vacancy in um, uh, a state, the the senator representing that state can basically oh, say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, so in 2017, the Republicans revoked it for circuit court judges. They were like, listen, if President Trump wants to nominate a judge, fill a vacancy in a Democrat's state, and the Democrat says, no, I don't like that guy, we don't give a fuck. We'll, for the we'll, Court of we'll, Appeals, right? Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. For for circuit judges, yeah. So when Democrats took back the majority in 2021. They kept that the way it was. They didn't restore the blue slip veto and Republicans were pissed. And everybody pointed out, well, you you revoked it during Trump and we're not going to have two sets of rules. Now, Dick Durbin, the, the, the uh, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, he's under pressure to revoke the blue slips for district court judges. And this ties us back to Cannon, Judge Cannon. Mm -hmm. So part of the reason that Judge Cannon, in my opinion, was assigned the case, or at least increased the probability, was because we have so many district court vacancies in Florida because Marco Rubio is refusing, he's like invoking the, the blue slip veto for all of Biden's appointees, all of them. So that means fewer judges, which meant increase the odds that, that Cannon was going to get this Destroy case. Destroy it. It's all garbage. Um, so, the oh. judiciary stuff is all broken because of the Republicans. Uh, they deserve no mercy on this issue. Breaking it wouldn't uh, substantially change the, the functioning of our, of our government. It's a stupid rule yes. anyway. Now in a, in a kind of national government where 
Um, at, all these issues are, are very, very national, especially with respect to the federal judiciary, especially when individual district court judges are doing nationwide injunctions that are like banning abortion medication or in the mm -hmm. you know, Republican case are doing things with immigration uh, that, that you, th you know, injunction banning Trump's uh, Muslim ban or something. So they have enormous power on a national scale. There's no reason why we should have this provincial uh, norm. And especially when there's such shenanigans going on the other side, I, I don't think that it makes sense for Democrats to abide it. I feel I like don't know there should other... be like a year long course, like mandatory in school where we learn about like governmental process because I feel you like you don't think I'm well, I mean, you don't think I'm well fucking read on stuff. No, what? <laughs> Wait, do you think that was a hit I, at you? I, yeah, I thought you were a little sly. Like, I no, didn't no, go to the sly class. is that like, I don't think 99% <laughs> of Americans give a Jeez. fuck about like these types of issues, even though arguably they're some of the they most should. important procedural stuff is some of the most important stuff that affects this country, right? Like your rights, yeah. where do judges come from? How does our, how do our processes and procedures work are arguably some of the most <laughs> important parts of the country, but a lot of people don't know fucking anything about them. And I feel like if people were forced to take like literally a year of like government, like a contemporary government class, I feel like people would have much different feelings about these things. But like, I think most yeah. America, I like probably 51% of Americans couldn't even name the three branches of government. Um, yeah, which I think is a really, really, really big deal. I think that's really bad. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to say how, how how effective a single class would be because like you learn you, you do you do math for twelve years but like how many Americans still suck at fucking basic math? Yeah, that's because I mean, teachers hard. suck. But you I know? feel like the thing is is I feel like a government class should be like a really exciting class. Like that's why it should that's why I say contemporary government. Like you should learn about process and procedure, not because of what happened in fucking seventeen seventy nine or eighteen fifty two. It should be like modern day. Here are examples of process and procedure in the country. This is how it's affecting us today. I think usually as a teach you when you make stuff more relevant to modern things people tend to care more about it yeah but, um, I, I, yeah as a pedagogical matter i would i think that what you're saying makes sense if you apply it to what their their lives are every day it's unfortunate then that like so much of the federal case law seems to be going towards a, a perspective on on going back to the the old days to decide what things mean today um to, to the exclusion of other kinds of things so 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 much of i think constitutional law now with respect to individual rights has to do with history and what the founders thought, what the framers were, were conceived of. Mm -hmm. um, Originalism. So in, in, in that sense, yeah, in that sense, I think in certain ways, history is entwined in process and structure. There's a reason why, part of the reason why the Senate is the way it is, has to do with the history of the country. Uh, part, part of the reason why there is no citizenship definition, think about that, there is no definition for what citizenship is in the Constitution, yeah, and it's something that has incredible importance, which is why people all fight over rights. Yeah, who yeah. shouldn't? Yeah, and and the reason for that is because, or one of the reasons, has to do with they were fights over slavery, and so defining citizenship necessarily got into questions pertaining to slavery, and you know, one that Dred Scott tried to decide, but but that's why the way in which history interacts with structure and procedure, I think, is important to tell us what structures are good and make sense and have always been historically made, making sense and which ones I think we can abandon, mm -hmm. which I think we need. We need some amendments. Yeah, um, yeah, but that's like, everybody always says that like passing amendments are, is it like an impossible process because of how daunting it is? Yeah, but I think yeah. the thing that makes it daunting isn't the process, it's people's apathy towards making no amendments because if people don't really care or understand the process that much, there's no way that you're gonna drum up support to do that over something that's like a more sexy social issue True. or tax cuts or something, I think. Yeah. I love you guys. You guys are good. Because and likewise. I'm sorry that things got too. very heated, bro. Um, I'm just glad we got Steven to finally admit that he is yeah, he uh, likes anti- pride flags. Yeah, That and he wants Democrats to break certain norms and institutions so that we to can be get clear, back to majority. Remember that Pisco know, just, said he would be okay with uh, Trump hanging mega flags up in the White House. He said that he oh, should no, have the right the to do that. that. Wait, wait, he should I have the, the right to do that. that. No, you said Trump should have the right to hang mega flags. Those are the right White House. You said that. Yes. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I disagree. I don't think so. Do you no, think Congress should have the right? Wait, 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 wait. Let's just That's make this clear. Stephen, do you think that uh, Congress should have the ability to put manga flags up? Through passing it through legislation? Yes. And then being signed by the president? Okay. Yeah. So then the only difference is. The only difference is I want a, I want actually yes that is true which is a I like how you're like ah oh, just a, what's the difference between the president unilaterally doing something versus laws being passed by Congress you know no, no, but then the problem wow. isn't really like whether the MAGA message is one you agree with or not. Yeah, of course. That, but that was never the issue. I don't know why you keep going back to that. You do, do you agree with the message? It's never about the message. It's about the process. Of course, it's about the message. When people are are 
in favor of some displays over others. They, what they're worried about principally is the message. They're not worried necessarily about. If you're worried you're principally about, about the message, that means you're being partisan. Bisco, how are you? How did you fall for the bait so hard? No, no it's, it's not a bait. It's, it's not was. a bait. It's not a bait. It's, uh, the political uh, branches are expected to engage politically, and I think that there's rooms for for displays that. But when we when we craft laws, they have to be laws that we're okay with both sides following. So you can't say like you should be able to hang flags as long as they're ones I agree with. That's okay, essentially what, about what you're saying. Laws? What? Gun control laws. Those are laws that burden gun owners more. Those are laws that burden certain groups of, of advocates more. They burden the people who are in support of the gun laws more. Every decision by the political branch may is liable Wait, hold on, to but that's, but that's that, but gun laws apply to all guns. I, w I would feel differently if we talked about passing a law that banned Glocks or passing a law that banned guns that appeared in the Mission Impossible movies. That would be different. That's what you're talking about. You're saying like some guns should be okay and some shouldn't um, based on if I like them or not. Now, if you want to make a blanket ban on all guns, no, that's no, similar no. to my position where you should make a blanket ban on Listen. all non-US or city flags or whatever. As I said, that there's there's a domain of, of area where I think it raises fundamental due process and separation of church and state concerns, establishment clause concerns, where I would have a problem with it, such as I think the, the best example is in a courthouse or in places where that kind of impartiality and isolation from the political branch is actually intertwined with individual rights and okay. our process. But I, I don't necessarily think that the display of a blatantly political flag by a political branch um, is is like that bad. Like for for example, would you have a problem with in the White House, in the Oval Office, Trump putting a MAGA flag up by himself? I don't know what the norms are buddy. inside the Oval Office. I don't, I don't know how Should that works. Should you have works. the power to? I, I, I don't know what they currently are. I, if, I mean, wait, should the president have the power to put his political flag in the Oval Office? In the like in the Oval Office, probably, sure. Because it's not like a public display of so, whatever. But I thought the Oval Office is like our office. It's the people. It's yeah, the but I don't. Public. Is it? I don't know if it is. I don't know if this came. I don't know if it really is. Right. Like it so. If you would say like inside us, of like a city councilman's office, should he be allowed to hang like a Nazi flag or a MAGA flag or a LGBT flag in his office? Yeah, probably. That's fine. That's where you were going. You were getting, the next step was going to be like. So you're telling me that you want Harry Reid to hide a Nazi flag in his office? That's what you want. But. Whoa, 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 no, 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 wait, why are you, at, hold on, you, you're doing a weird thing, nothing I'm saying is contradictory here, right, the very first thing that I said at the very onset of the conversation was that, like, stuff in, like, public offices, a display for public should probably represent, like, all of us to, as much Oval as possible. Is, is, you know, it doesn't have public access, but it, it, it doesn't have public access, and it's it. very, I, not that much, I don't, agree. I don't think, I don't think, hold on, are you telling me that the standards for what's inside the Oval Office should be the same standards of what hangs outside the White House? I think, from a constitutional perspective, obviously they're different. They're different. They are different. But from the policy perspective that you are putting forth, relating to wanting places to be for everybody, wanting your country I, to represent you. I, I think you, a person's you. office is fundamentally different. Like if Biden wants to put a crucifix or something in his office, in the Oval Office, that's a lot different than putting a crucifix mm. on the outside of the White House. I think. Okay. Does it? Do they? Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I don't actually know. This. <laughs> the president. They actually do live in a part of the White House, right? Like his family. Yes. Yeah. Okay. In the White House proper, not like the a residence. Different... Yeah. In the residence. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's the main building that you see. Like they they work in the West Wing, but that big ass like three story building that you see with the flag on top. That's the residence. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good talk, guys. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're gonna bait on real quick. Or... Hey, um, how no, you doing? How's Florida? You good? Uh, you know, I'm gonna be honest. It's starting to get pretty hot down here. But, um, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Don't you guys want some some streams in New York City? Um, you know, I was thinking about it, and then I saw the uh, smoke you guys were inhaling up there. And that's a one-time thing. It'll never happen. Dude, never. speaking of which, Pisco, like, wh what's up with that? Is, has that been diffused? I haven't been tracking it. Oh, it's or are you... been diffused. The city is vibrant, and it smells good. New Wait, New York City smells good? New York City? Okay, all right. I've been through <laughs> no, Central no, Park. It, I mean, it still yeah. smells like poop, but yeah. it always smells like poop and pee. I'm still gonna um, be honest, and maybe I need to spend more time, because I've only really been to Manhattan and Brooklyn, but like, people make fun of like how New York City is disgusting and blah, blah, blah. I feel like I've never seen anything there that's even remotely close to like Seattle or LA. But maybe I just haven't been to like the worst parts of like New York City yet. It's my favorite city to visit, but like Central Park in the summer is just, it smells ratchet. It's just, it's ferocious, but okay. I love it. It's a great place to visit. All right, well, guys, yeah, good talk. Um, I'm sure we'll be doing it again soon. And, hey, Pisco, yeah. you need to, I would like you to clarify in DMs why we couldn't <laughs> talk about that thing, just yeah, if you don't sure. mind. Yeah. Okay, all right. All right. 
Lycan, Steven, see you guys. Be careful. Later, brother.